or back in the record and file 23110 FC, People of the State of Michigan versus Shonda Vander Ark, continuation after lunch. The jury is secured in the jury room. Uh, anything before, uh, uh, for the record before we bring the jury out, Mr. Roberts? Yep. Mr. Johnson? No, sir, thank you. All right, please rise. You may be seated. Mr. Roberts, you can uh, begin your cross-examination. Oh, actually, we'll recall. Yeah, sorry. How to do that. Ms. Van Ark. Uh, you're reminded you are still under oath. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Van Ark. Hello, Now, uh, Mr. Johnson uh, kind of tried to shortchange you a little bit earlier in your cross area in his direct examination when he wanted to talk about your background, uh, your schooling. Um, remind the jury again of your educational background. Um, I have a Bachelor of Science degree, magna cum laude, and then I also have a Juris Doctorate, it's a law degree, that I graduated magna cum laude second in my class. And uh, magna cum laude, for those that might not be familiar, means with the highest honors, correct? Yes, sir. In law school, actually, SUMA only goes to number one. In, in, at the college level, you, it's above a certain GPA, but for law school, only number one gets summa, and then above a certain GPA gets magna. And then below that is even cum laude, which is what Mr. Johnson tried to say you were, yes, and I think you corrected him and made sure the jury understood, no, you were second in your class in yes, law school, sir. correct? Yes, sir. And uh, you took the bar exam? I did. Passed the bar exam? First try, yes, sir. With a very high score, right? Yes, sir. What was that score? 182 out of 200. The uh, bar exam is an incredibly difficult test to pass, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. And mm. It was like 400 hours of study that went into that. And the pass rate for it usually hovers somewhere around 60%. So four out of 10 people that take it usually fail, right? I did not know that, but I'll take your word for it. Okay. But you understood it to be a very difficult test when oh, we yes. took it. Yes. Uh, and I believe that score would constitute the highest score for, for, your, for that time that, that you took the bar, right? Your score. I, I mean, I don't know. I would assume so. Um, and you also were magna cum laude in undergrad as well for your yes, bachelor's sir. degree? Yes, sir. And where did, where did you obtain your bachelor's degree? Liberty from? University. You had an opportunity to actually work in this very courthouse for, for a period of time, is that correct? Yes, sir. I did my law school externship, and then after I graduated law school, I stayed on as an intern. It wasn't paid, but the, the experience was invaluable to me, so it was worth it. And particularly the field that you were working when you were working here, you, you worked under Judge Smedley, one of yes, our other circuit court judges, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, the, the, your area of focus that you wanted to, to really focus in on was appellate criminal work, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you had an opportunity to work on some cases here in Muskegon? I did, yes, sir. And eventually that, that turned into an opportunity to go work for another judge in another county, correct? Yes, sir. Up in the Waco County? Yes, sir, for another circuit judge. Right. And, and you're doing the same type of work there? Yeah, even more work than what I was doing here, more specific. Um, I didn't do the sentence scorings here, and I did that there. Um, I actually, I helped Judge Smedley write one opinion while I was here, but I actually drafted most of my judge's opinions as law clerk. Quite the responsibility that you had there, so congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. Um, and remind the jury again, how many children do you actually have? I have five total. Okay, and go, if, again, we're not going to name the youngest, youngest, little man, I think. Little man, know. yes. Um, Nolan is 23 and married. Um, Paul is 21 now. Millie, my only daughter, is 19. She's in college in Oklahoma, as far as I know. Um, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Um, Timothy was... He would be 17. He was 15 a month, a month shy of 16, and then little man just turned nine in September. And um, with the exception of Timothy, no harm has come to your children in terms of them 
you know, dying as a result of malnutrition and starvation, has it? No, not at all. A dehydration, hypothermia? No, sir. No, none of those inflicted on any of your other children? No, sir. They're all healthy. Um, Detective, or Detective Pieski, at the time he interviewed you, uh, I, I think attempt, attempted to get some photos uh, of Timothy from your phone, and you told him that you did, had no photos on your phone of him from January on, did you? I had one from January, but after that, no, I didn't have any. But you had a functioning phone. I did, yes, sir. You used it to monitor the cameras that we've talked about, the motion sensors, all that stuff. You had the ability to use a phone that was your own personal phone. Yes, right? sir, that was my phone. It wasn't a work phone where there was a restriction oh, no. to say, well, no. you can't take photos, anything no. of that nature, was it? No. So you certainly had the ability to have photographs of your child on your phone, right? I did, yes, sir. Um, Let's talk about some of your health issues because we listed quite uh, quite a few issues that, that you're, in terms of your diagnosis and health issues that you had. Um, I think you said ADHD, um, something called sensory processing disorder. OCD. OCD. Um, th those PTSD. PTSD. I, I would. I guess I would kind of classify those more as. Almost, I don't want to use, I'm not using this word in a negative context, because those are almost more mental disorders. Would you yes, sir. With yes, that? sir. No, I, I agree with that. Right. You also had some physical disabilities as well. Yes, sir. And I, I don't know if Mr. Johnson went into those, so why don't you tell the jury what your physical disorders are as well? I have um, allergy induced asthma. I am allergic to almost everything environmental other than animals, every different type of pollen and mold and, and weeds. And then I am a reactive hypoglycemic. Um, I have been my whole life, but it was actually after Timothy was born, it got much worse. And um, they finally figured out right after I moved here why it, I mean, what was going on. But it required, I can eat and my blood sugar will still crash. So I can pass out, I can be doing whatever and just pass out. So. And if I'm not mistaken, you actually, eat, I, had, I had the opportunity to meet a very, very nice, but very large dog. You had a service animal when you worked here, didn't you? Yes, sir, I did. Gemini. Gemini, yes. And Gemini's function as your service dog was, was what? He was sent trained to pick up the, your blood sugar smell. Um, if you've ever been around a diabetic, when their sugar's high enough, they put off this hubba bubba bubblicious smell. Well, we, as humans, we can't pick up the low blood sugar smell, but a dog can actually pick up your sugar going up about 20 minutes before we can, and they can pick up the low blood sugar. So he was sent trained. He would let me know when my sugar was about to crash, so I always carried orange juice with me, and that would keep my blood sugar up for two and a half to three hours guaranteed. And then he was also trained, if I ignored his alert, and this did happen at work a couple of times, um, he was trained, he was off leash, he was trying to go and get somebody to bring them to me to make sure I took care of it so I didn't pass out. Uh, it's just remarkable that dogs can do that. It's just it an is. aside. Um, and was Gemini the first service dog you had? No, on? sir. He was my second. Okay. And so you had one before Gemini, I did. and then one after. Then one after, and that was Sharma. Was Sharma, that right? yes, sir. He was another Great Dane. Another Great Dane. Okay. Um, I like the big dogs. So you are certainly, you are keenly aware of your health issues and the things that you need to do to address your health issues, right? At times. I don't take great care of myself. I will admit that. It, and the fallback to that is you have a dog that will it alert does. you if your blood sugar gets yes. low. Yes. Yeah. So you understand that if, so you have a backup plan. Yes. Right? I, yeah. So if, if, if I forget to eat or my blood sugar gets too low, then my dog is going to alert me to that, so I've, so I've got a backup plan. Yes, right? sir. But you understand the how that works. You understand yes, sir. the medical need to, to have those things treated. Right? Yes, sir. And the need to have your other issues that we talked about get treatment for those issues as well, don't you? Yes, sir. Um, sensory processing disorder involves basically overstimulation, right? Yes, sir. And you suffer from a, a disorder which causes you to become overstimulated with what, audio and visual stimuli, correct? It's, it's, that's part of it, yes, sir. It can be stress-related as well. But as a punishment for your child, you decided that hot sauce, audio alarms, cold, cold, we'll get into this later, but cold, at least cold, if not ice baths, and isolation and sensory deprivation were appropriate means of punishment. Is that, is that your testimony? Those yes, are appropriate sir. forms of punishment? For some of it, yes, sir. You also train service animals, correct? I do. And when you train service animals, um, is, is crate training involved, involved at all? In yes, crate? it is, usually. Right. And, and explain what crate training is to a jury. Um, it depends on what you're using it for. Usually it's part of house training to begin with. Um, 
and when the service animal in training is very young, you don't get to take them with you 24-7. Um, so you don't want to leave them unattended a lot of times. Plus, the, putting a dog in a crate, a lot of times that's comforting to them. They like the, the, the more enclosed space. So it keeps them contained, keeps them from being destructive, and it teaches them, like for house training, it'll teach them not to do anything in their, in their house, basically, where you take them outside and where they do their business. And one of the ways you make them feel comfortable in, in their crates and so it's their house is they have a blanket or something of comfort in, in the crates, right? Uh, I don't usually, at least not for house training, because then they could actually do their business on that and shove it to the back of the crate. So I don't usually put anything in there. But that is a method that some, some people, people do use. employ. Some people training. use it, yes, right. but I don't. Right. Um, we've had a lot of, there's a lot of text messages. We had a lot of testimony from Paul yesterday and a lot of photographs about Timothy's small room. Um, that was basically like a crate, wasn't it? I don't, I don't believe it was that enclosed, but he, he asked for a space that he could close the door. He asked to go in, into that. He asked for a he he asked for somewhere he could um, some place he can go in and close the door, and it was actually half joking. I was like, "That's all I've got," because the other rooms were taken, and I, there was no way he was sharing with Paul, and I didn't really want him sharing with little man either. But you didn't set that that up as a room for him, did you? Not originally. No, he was actually out in the the lower area for a while. But you didn't you didn't put a bed in there. You didn't put we a did originally. In yes, there. he tore it up. Okay. But there, but there was no mattress, nothing of comfort for there in him the day before he died, was there? Not that day, no. He had torn it up. I couldn't afford to get another one. You put a, you put a blue tarp in there, didn't you? It was on, that was what was on the mattress previously, yes. And the tarp was because he would wet himself? Yes, sir. Because he, I tried the mattress covers. I tried plastic. I tried some of the rewashable. And he kept tearing them up. So his place of comfort was a closet with a blue tarp. Is that what you, he's, is that what you want the jury to some, believe? He spent some time there. I wouldn't say that was a place of comfort. I mean, spent some was, time there. Well, let's get into that. He slept <coughs> in there most nights, didn't he? After, I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know when exactly. It was. I mean, I know it was after my husband's stroke. I don't know when after that. But um, once he'd asked for that, yes, he did. In, in fact, he rarely even slept on his bed, did he? Um, he had taken the bed apart and lost some of the bolts. I couldn't. It wasn't safe for him to sleep up there. So, so the bed that we see on those pictures, it wasn't even safe to be used? No. So it was a complete lie when you told the police officers that you had to pull him off the bed to put him on the ground to do CPR, wasn't it? Yes. And it was a complete lie when you told 911, I need to put you on hold so I can take him off the bed to perform CPR, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I don't even remember. So in all your days, all your confusion, all your blacking out, tunnel vision, all that, you, you were able to somehow remember. I, I ought to tell everybody that Timothy was sleeping on the bed. Remember doing that. Vaguely, yes, sir. Have you ever given hot sauce to the dogs, to train the dogs? Um, I have put it on a couple of objects to keep them off of objects, yes. Keeps them, keeps them away from it, right? Yes, it does. Right, because they don't want to eat the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would, so you never actually grabbed a dog, forced its mouth open, and poured hot sauce down its throat, have you? No. Never put, bread, put hot sauce on a piece of food and then fed it to them make them eat it, have you? No, because I don't give my dogs human food. You can't do that with service animals. No, but you could put it on dog food, couldn't you? I guess. I've never even thought about that, honestly. So it never occurred to you to use hot sauce, enforcing the use of hot sauce on a dog, but it occurred to you to use that as a form of punishment for your 14-year-old child? It, it was Paul's idea, but yes, it, I was at my wit's end at, the, at that time. It was Paul's idea, and you thought, yep, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think we'll do that. Is that what you're saying? I don't remember the exact conversation, but I said, it, like I said, at that point, I was willing to try anything. I was. We'll get into the text, but there's yeah. dozens of texts in here, and this is just a small section of text where you tell Paul, put more hot sauce on the bread, give him four slices of hot sauce. Don't do you remember those text messages? Some of them, not very many, but some of them. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't punish a dog with hot sauce, but it's okay to punish a child with it. Objection, on that. That's, that's, that's... I'll move on. Okay. Would you stick a dog in an ice bath as punishment? I did, that would never occur to me. But then having big dogs, you don't, I don't bathe them at home anyway. 
I use dry shampoo, or then I or I take them somewhere else. I, I don't I'm, have. Facility. I'm talking about as form of. I'm not talking about giving them a bath. I'm talking about using. I don't have as space. A form of punishment, putting a dog in an ice bath. I don't have space to do that, so I, I wouldn't think of that because I don't have space with that size dog. You're saying if you had a large enough tub to punish one of the dogs, you put them put them in an ice bath. I can't. I mean, I can't imagine doing that, but. You can't imagine doing that. Right. Correct. You can't imagine punishing an animal by putting them in an ice bath. Because animals can't think the same way humans can. So it's okay to do it on a human because they can think, right? They can, they can think better than dogs can, so it's okay to put them in an ice bath. Is that what your testimony is? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Is it okay to put a human in an ice bath because they can think better than dogs can, but you wouldn't do it to a dog? I mean, based on the way you asked that, I guess the answer would have to be yes, but it's just a, it's not okay. the way I think, so. I'm not, not trying to put words in your mouth, but you said you wouldn't do it for a dog, but we know you did it as a punishment for I never, Timothy. I never did personally. But you told Paul to do it? Um, yes, a couple of times. And it never occurred to you, this is not a good idea. We shouldn't be doing this, right? No, because it was, the, um, the amount of ice was almost, I mean, it was non-existent, so. So it's okay as long as it's not a lot of ice in the ice bath? Is that your testimony? If it doesn't affect the temperature much. It starts off as cold anyway, doesn't it? Um, not originally. I don't know down the road, but originally I did, that's not what, what I had told him to do. Because the original time, the first time that happened was before my husband's stroke. It was Timothy had, um, the, we, we noticed there was no hot water. And we were like, what the heck? And I went down and I'm looking and I noticed the pilot light's not on on water, it's a gas water heater. I'm like, what on earth is going this on? This ends with Timothy turning off the gas, doesn't it? This, uh, yes, this, sir. This part of the story, okay. And he lied let, about let, it for let, two let, days, but. Let, let me just make okay. sure I understand that. Is, is, is it your testimony that you put ice in an otherwise hot bath to cool it down? Yes. Why don't you just start with warm water to begin with? I honestly don't know. That, but that's what, that, what happened the first time. So if you repeatedly refer in these text messages to them as cold and or ice baths, but that's what it was at the end, wasn't it? Cold baths or ice baths, at right? At the end, yes, sir, but not the first time. Not the first time. You, you, you apparently needed ice to cool down hot. I have bath. no idea what I was thinking. I was, we'd, ha, we'd all had to have cold showers for two days, and he'd lied to us about the water heater. I'd had to have the gas company out. You remember taking the law school exam test? The LSAT? LSAT? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hated that test. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I agree with you there. There's a section on there that's about logic and reasoning, right? Yes, sir. And I kind of explained it to my friends as it's the, you know, so-and-so can't next to so -and sit next to so-and-so at a party, and this person can't sit on this side of the table, and this, so, you, so you have to map out all those things, right? Yes, sir. I'm guessing you scored pretty high on the LSAT, didn't you? I, I, I scored pretty well. I mean, I got a scholarship to law school, so... So for a test that serves your interest for getting into law school, you have no problem using logic and reasoning, do you? I mean, I managed to score on, I, had, I hated that test. I know I, I did not miss a single, um, there's a, a logic games section. I think I missed one question on that out of 25. And I think the reading comprehension was also something like that. So I think the lowest score was actually on the logical reasoning. And yet somewhere before the time your husband had a stroke, Logic told you that you should use ice in a hot bath. Is that, is that your testimony? Yes, sir. But then after that, you do acknowledge that it was cold and or ice baths. Yes, sir. And that you encouraged Paul to pour water on Timothy, didn't you? Just the one day. Just the one day? Yes, sir. Which day was that? The day before he passed away. Hmm. Now, Mr. Johnson asked you some questions about uh, homeschooling and not ever taking Timothy to a doctor. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And I think you said that the reason you couldn't do that is because you couldn't get your ex-husband to help you out with signing over custody. Do you remember that? Correct. Yes, sir. The truth is you were, by court order, not allowed to have custody of Timothy, weren't you? That's correct. But I was offered the option of either taking him or they were going to put him in foster care. And I didn't, I didn't want my son in foster care. I don't think anybody would. But there was a court order that said you are not allowed to have custody of Timothy. I'm not talking about a custody agreement. I'm talking about a court order that says you can't have custody of Timothy. 
my understanding of the, the order that you're talking about, um, it wasn't that I couldn't, it's just that I didn't get custody that time. Excuse the jury. Uh, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll All right, we're back on the record. Uh, we're going to have an excuse the jury at this time. Thank you. Be seated. All right, Mr. Roberts. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, submit to the court that uh, the way that those questions were just answered, it was, a, it was really just a very simple yes or no question. And we covered this, and Ms. Maynard was present when we covered this, and the court was very limited in what it wanted me to ask, and I asked that question. And she tried to explain it away by saying that she was then offered a chance to take custody or have the child go into foster care. We know that's not true. We know, and, and I think that gives me fair game at this point to ask her, isn't it true? that you were actually subject to a petition to terminate your parental rights, and the only way that was withdrawn was because you agreed to give up and not have custody of Tim. Sir, Johnson. May I ask my client a question? Did you, under, did you hear the conversation we had about the custody situation and, and the judge's ruling on that? Yes, sir. What did, that, what did you think that meant? What do you think his ruling on the custody question, whether you could have legal custody of your child meant? What did you think that meant? Could you rephrase that? Because I, I didn't interrupt that conversation, but while y'all are having that conversation, I mean, my understanding of the exit order, the order you're talking about, was not the way it's been characterized. And okay. I mean, from what Mr. Roberts just said, that was not my understanding of, of how that, that case ended. Okay. So. All right. So. Your Honor, my response is this. I, I want that, that conversation because I want the court to, to have an opportunity to determine for itself if my client understood the instruction. Clearly, she did not. Clearly, her, the way she processes the information is different, and she did not understand that she was not allowed to go into those other details. Uh, quite frankly, she sat right here and she heard Your Honor say, this is how far we're going to go. This was clearly a, a yes or no answer. The rest of that, that, that conversation goes those responses were, were not, were, I, I would agree with, with the people, were not in keeping with the, court, with the spirit of the court's order. They didn't get into a lot of detail, but they clearly weren't in keeping. I would suggest, Your Honor, that my client be, be re-explained the limitations of her conversation on that issue, and that there be a corrective instruction given to the jury. Uh, I, I would disagree that we've gone so far into it. I think the court stopped, stopped us before we got to that point. Where, where it, it's opening a door that, that's, that uh, allows evidence in that's more prejudicial than probative. I don't think we're at that point yet. That's my opinion. So I would ask for a, a re-explanation from my client as to how far she can go in answering this question and a, and a corrective instruction to the jury. Mr. Roberts? She, you can't ring the bell, Judge, just because the witness decided to answer the question how she wanted to answer the question. That's like saying, well, I want to take back the answer now because I don't like what, it, what, what happened when I answered it. That, that, that's, that's, it's not fair. It's not fair to the prosecution. She's a law student. She just sat up here and explained how she graduated second in her class in law school and passed this bar of the score of 182. She sat through this entire trial. She's been taking notes. She's been actively participating. She's trying to answer the questions the way she wants to to get her point across, plain and simple. And the court's order couldn't have been any more explicit that it was a yes or no question about isn't there a court order prohibiting you from having custody of the kids. 
I get to come back and explain now why she's sitting here saying that she thinks the order said, well, whatever you want custody back, if you want to take custody or the child goes into foster care, you can do that. All right, well, before I, I could... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't cut the court off. I apologize. I, I would just offer the court, I'm prepared for limiting instructions to the jury, that they don't consider this as any type of character evidence or anything of that nature. I think that's perfectly appropriate. But this is, this is a mess of our own making at this point. All right, well, before I make a ruling, uh, I was didn't hear her exact answer because I was in the middle of trying to look at Mr. Johnson to say maybe we stop this. So before we, uh, before I make a ruling, I want to hear exactly what her answer was. So I'm going to take a recess. I'm going to look at the record and make a finding. So, yep, we're in recess.
All right, we're back in the record in 23110FC, uh, People versus Shonda Vander Ark. Uh, the, there was an objection before we broke. Uh, it's kind of discussion about opening doors, not opening doors. The parties, excuse me, the attorneys have an opportunity to speak to the court and chambers. Uh, at this time, and I'm just going to summarize our discussion, uh, what the court is going to permit by, I guess, agreement of the parties or, I mean, if it's not an agreement, I'm, okay, I, Mr. Rob, I'm not speaking for you. No, it, we've, I think it's fair to say that we've settled on a way to ask the question that I believe everybody, including the defendant, are on the same page. Okay, so essentially the question we're going to ask is, uh, is it true that the order from Oklahoma prevented you or, or only authorized you to have supervised parenting time of Timothy. Is that correct, Mr. Roberts? That's correct. That would be that your understanding, Mr. Johnson? It is, Your Honor. Right. Ms. Vanner, do you understand the question? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Jo or Mr. Roberts, why don't you go ahead and just, I want to make sure uh, before we bring the jury out that we make sure that it doesn't open any other doors before we don't have to. So go ahead and ask the question. Thank you. Ms. Vanner, is it true that the last custody order from Oklahoma that involved Timothy indicated you were only to be allowed supervised parenting time? Yes, sir. Fair okay. enough. All right. With that, any other thing else before we bring the jury in? Mr. Roberts? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes, Your Honor. Prepared. Okay. Please rise. May be seated. Ms. Roberts, you can continue. Thank you. Uh, just to kind of put a bow on this and clarify things, Ms. Vander Ark, is it true that the last custody order from Oklahoma that involved Timothy indicated that you are only to be allowed supervised parenting time? That is correct. Now, uh, Mr. Johnson was uh, talked to you about the fact that after Adam had his stroke tragically in January and was out of the home, that that, that was a it was a significant financial hit for you, is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And uh, as a result of that, you didn't have a lot of income coming in. Um, were you working in New Ago at that time? I was, yes, sir. Um, so you, the, when you worked here, it was not a paid internship. You were working in New Ago for a paid internship at that time, is that correct? For a paid clerkship, yes, sir. Right, clerkship. And then what were, your other, um, what were your other sources of income at that time? Um, which time? Well, in January, right after the stroke. Right after the stroke. Um, the rental income that I received from my brother from Oklahoma, and then I had I was down to one dog training client. Um, now, you're not suggesting to this jury that you couldn't afford to have food for your kids, are you? No, sir. In fact, you're, we've seen the pictures, and you, you don't even show you the pictures of your freezer, your oh, refrigerator, no. your pantry. All pretty well stocked with food, wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so, you, the, sir so there certainly was a financial ability for you to provide for your children, at least in a food sense, correct? Yes, sir. I bought yeah. food first. And you're, you're a highly intelligent woman, and I'm sure you're aware of multiple resources available in the community if that ever became an issue, right? Yes, sir. United Way, food pantries, anything of that nature, but, but you never felt the need to reach out to any of those resources, did you? No, sir, because we had groceries covered. Okay. <clears throat> um, you talked about, Mr. Johnson asked you about the motion sensors, and I'm not sure we got like any real sense of clarity about the motion sensors. Um, when we're talking about motion sensors, we're talking about ones that would um, not only go off if, if there was motion, that's what a motion sensor is, obviously, but would give some type of audio alarm, right? Uh, some of them did, yes, sir. And um, Timothy had very sensitive hearing, didn't he? I was not aware of that, no, sir. That's When Paul said that yesterday, that puzzled me. You didn't know about that? You didn't know he had surgery to put tubes in his ears? I was there for the surgery for his tubes, but no, I mean, it was... At least my experience with Timothy was half the time he didn't hear what you were saying. So, um, did you know that he found it d discomforting when that when those noises happened? Did you know that that was, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, that was that was a punishment too for those noises to be going on? No, sir, I did not. 
Um, um, and Timothy was autistic, right? He was on the autism yes, spectrum. Yes, he was on the spectrum. Loud noises, disturbances, things like that. Those are troubling for folks with autism, aren't they? For some of them, but he never, I mean, he, he liked to listen to his tablet extremely loud. Um, and I remember, because um, little man, sorry, I'm trying not to say his name. Yeah. Um, you know, when we'd have thunderstorms, it, sometimes it would freak him out, and it didn't, things like that didn't bother Timothy at all. And Timothy sat with me, okay, go ahead and judge me or laugh at me, but when I, before the PTSD, I used to watch, when I watched college football, I would scream at the television every play, offense and defense, that's just who I am. And, um, and Timothy was right there with me hollering at the TV. So, so the, the alarms didn't bother him at all? I mean, I wouldn't say that, I mean, they, they bother people, probably some, everybody, but, I, but they didn't, it wasn't, he wasn't overly sensitive to it. Right, because it begs the question, if the alarms don't bother him, what's the point in having them, right? Yes, sir. And they were there well, as part, it, a disincentive for him to do the things he wasn't supposed to do. It was to let us know he was doing it, too. Right. That way we knew what was going on. But it was, it was supposed to also be, you're yes. not supposed to be doing this, and we know when you're, you're going to be doing yes. this, right? Yes, it was, it was so he knew we would be notified. And the, the doing this that we're talking about is coming out of the basement area of the home, right? Coming upstairs in the middle of the night, yes, sir. Coming upstairs in the middle of the night? Yes, sir. So, so these would only be active at night? I only turned them on at night, yes, sir. So there's no text messages in there about turning on the motion sensor during the day so we can't come upstairs? I, I mean, I don't recall it, but... But you would, if those are in there, you would agree with me then that you were using the motion sensors to keep him downstairs even during the day, right? It, I mean, if it happened occasionally, I'm do, just... Do you remember the text exchange about turning off the alarms? so that he can go to the bathroom and then turning the alarms back on after he's done going to the bathroom? Do you remember those? That was read the other day? Vaguely, yes, sir. Well, I'm I sure you remember them from being read the other day. Do you yeah. remember sending those text messages? No, sir. No memory of those text messages? No, sir. And you're talking, there's, are you talking motion sensor or there was, there was I'm one- I'm talking motion sensor right now. Okay, there, the motion sensors are, are still, that's not, that, it, that's different. You're talking about a, a it was actually for a bike alarm, like for somebody stealing a bike, I guess it was. And you, that was the one that, that, was, that you were referring to. The motion sensors that we've been talking about are posted in the house and those don't get turned, those didn't need to be turned on or off. I see, so the motion sensor with the alarm is the one that was outside, is that what you're saying? The motion sensor with the alarm, the, the one that makes noise, was not one that was in the house? No, they were up, up on the stairs. There was, there was a personal one that you could attach to whatever you wanted to. Right. There was one of those, and then there were several on the stairs. I see. Okay. And the purpose of the one on the stairs one was to make sure you didn't come upstairs. In the middle of the night, yes, sir. Right. And the ones to, and you actually, the ones that you could attach to a thing, you actually attached to a person, didn't you? Occasionally, yes, sir. So, the... Let's talk about the cameras then. Um, well, I guess let me ask you this question. So the motion sensor goes off, the alarm goes off, maybe it doesn't go off, maybe it's not one of the ones that have, have an alarm on it. So what? How, how is that a deterrent, or how is that a, a punishment to Timothy? It wasn't meant as a punishment, it was to let us know so we could go make sure that he was, you know, he wasn't wandering around, he wasn't getting into taking batteries apart and taking other, messing with stuff that he shouldn't have been. So you wanted to restrict his movements and you wanted to know if he moved out of the basement area whenever the motion sensors were on. Yes, sir. And the cameras are, I, I think you testified that the camera, at least initially, you put the camera in place in, Gabe, in G's room to make sure that he wasn't running around without his clothes on, right? Yes, sir. When he was a toddler, he would strip down. How does putting a camera in his room to show him running around restrict him from doing that? Well, it doesn't restrict it. It was to let us know that he was doing it. And you have a problem with him running around? He wasn't potty trained. He wasn't potty trained, I see. But other, otherwise, if you're potty trained, it's okay to have your children running around naked? No. No. You wouldn't want to have a child running around your house naked, would you? No. You wouldn't want G to see his brother running around naked, would you? No. And I'm wondering why the text message that you sent to um, Paul about, about Timothy making a mess in the garage was that he had to clean the garage without anything on below the waist and then he could stand against the wall without anything below his waist. I don't remember that, sir. I'm sorry. You don't remember that text message? No, sir. Interesting. So 
take a look at, this is from the larger text messages, this is all the text messages between you and Paul, it's a few hundred if not thousand pages. Uh, take a look at, this is page 5783, if Mr. Johnson wants to reference. The, te this, the blue is your text messages. Can you read that for the jury, please? The blue one says, my, big, my bigger issue is that you said you checked every minute or so, but checking on the camera would have told you he wasn't listening. I'm not absolving him of responsibility by a long shot, but there are reasons the cameras are in place. What time was that sent? Uh, 4.14 p.m. it looks like. So at 4.14 p.m. you're upset with Paul because he's not watching Timothy every minute on the cameras, right? If I remember correctly, that particular day, yeah, he said he was going to check. That, that wasn't, I didn't expect him to check every day, but there were days that were much more challenging, and that was when I asked him to keep a closer eye on him. Where is the text message that describes what the challenging incident was that day? I don't know, sir. I mean, there was, it was, there was a lot of challenging incidents. Going upstairs? No, sir. Going upstairs was okay during the day? Um, as long as that is, he was being monitored, yes. You talked about, we, we talked about the autism already. You talked about a number of other issues that, um, that Timothy had, bipolar, ADHD, were there some other ones? Or sensory processing disorder. Sensory process, so he had the same disorder that you did? Yes, sir. Sensory processing <coughs> disorder. Um, but there's different, it's, there's different manifestations of it. He had the one where his senses being overloaded didn't, have, didn't make a problem for him, is that what you're saying? His was, he was more hyposensitive, which means he didn't, he didn't react the way a typical person would as, as far as less of a reaction. Um, there was a, a time I was told about it when we still lived in Oklahoma. Um, I guess he was being given a bath and he fell and, and hit his jaw and they didn't, he didn't say anything, he wasn't, he didn't say he was in pain. Well, I guess he went to someone's bedroom and my oldest son brought him back out and he had completely bitten through his tongue and not said anything. So he, he did not react as much to stimuli as most people do. There's hypo and hypersensitive and he was hyposensitive. And is there medication for that that you take? Not that I'm aware of. I don't. Uh, do, do you go to counseling for, for, for you or did you go to counseling for, for you? Not for that, no sir. Um, for any of your other issues though? I have over time. Right. It's been a long time. Um, but in fact, the entire time Timothy was in the state of Michigan, you never took him to a counselor or a doctor to address any of those issues, did you? No, sir, I didn't have insurance, the insurance information. You didn't reach out to any resources in the community that might have been available to help, did you? I, I did actually contact... Yes or no? Did you reach out to any resources yes. in the community? Which ones? I contacted DHHS about uh, getting on Medicaid, but they said that because he had other insurance, that would be primary, so we still had to have that information. Did you reach out to Community Mental Health, or Health West, I guess it's called now? I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't, I, I hadn't heard of Health West until I started working in the courthouse. Right, you worked in this courthouse, in the county that you live in, for at least the entire summer, as I recall correctly, you, you, and you never knew that we had a, a, a mental health agency here, here in Muskegon County? I didn't realize that's what it was for. I, I honestly, I didn't think about it. I re the only, as far as resources go, the only thing that I thought about was DHHS for things like Medicaid and food stamps. Mr. Johnson asked you about the alarms on the doors and you, your, your response to him was that the alarms went on the doors about three weeks before Timothy passed away, is that correct? Somewhere in there, I was approximating Somewhere it. Somewhere in there, okay. <clears throat> you can look up the Amazon history on my phone. Oh, I'll tell you one better than that. This is page 3932 of the text messages from you. Could you go ahead and read that exchange for the jury and the date, please? Uh, did he say miraculously? And no, this, I was, this is huh? Paul's response now, right? Yes. No, I was emphasizing because I turned on the alarm, yet he slipped past. Um, that's not good. We need to put up the other two alarms tonight later on. Hmm. That's the motion sensors. But you referred to the alarms. <coughs> yes, sir, I did. Right. And that was That's in... what we called them. That was February. February. That was motion February. sensors. Right. Months before he died. Yes, sir. You just mixed up what an alarm or what a motion sensor is? Yes, sir. That's what I, ca I called them alarms. I didn't call them motion sensors most of the time. Mm -hmm. 
This one's a little bit longer exchange, but if you could read 3996 for me, please. Just this page? Nope, the whole thing that's stable, please. <clears throat> uh, is it snowing at home currently? KK, Timothy apparently ate my Pop-Tarts a few days back. Not anymore. Uh, are you kidding me? When did he do that? He said he doesn't know the exact day. Um, that's a bunch of BS, and how did he do it? Did he sneak down to the bathroom? He says it was before we had the other alarms. Um, I said, that's not true because we've had those for over a week now. And you had Pop-Tarts in that box as of this past weekend or Friday at the very latest. That's still the motion sensors. Okay, That's so again, you refer to the motion sensors as alarms yes, there. And you're upset at that point because Timothy did some Pop-Tarts. Is that my understanding of this text messages? In that case, because he stole them, Paul had, had gotten them for himself and because he stole them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And that date, uh, I don't know if we read it or not, but you would agree with me that, it was, oh, it's on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2022, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I want to take a look at 3702. Crossed out the parts that it's not really necessary for you to read, and just go ahead and tell the jury that date and what's on there. Uh, the date is January 24th. Okay. Uh, did Timothy have to wash his sheets? Question mark. Yes. I said, ugh, K. Okay. Pretty sure that is him pouting over the extra camera and motion sensors. Okay. So, and that was in January of 2022, correct? Yes, sir. So no problem referring to the motion sensor in January of 2022, but suddenly, come February, you mix up what an alarm and what a motion detector are. <coughs> yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Like I said, you can check the windows on history. You don't want to revise your testimony about when it was that you started using alarms on the doors? No, sir, because it's in my Amazon history when I purchased those. You, Mr. Johnson asked you about Timothy being on medication for a lot of his issues, is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, I think you said that when he came to you, you, he was like a zombie, right? Yes, sir. So you decided to take him off those medications, didn't you? No, sir, we didn't. We couldn't get refills. We, well, had, to, we had to get a, a refill through a doctor, and we didn't have a doctor. So your testimony wasn't that you took him off those medications? I said that I wanted to. You wanted to? Yes, sir. At he, least some of them because he, they were, I mean, he was, he was a zombie. It was horrible. You wanted to take him off the medications and it happened anyway because you can get refills for him. So you're actually happy that that happened. Not the way it happened, but he wasn't a zombie afterwards. But you definitely did not consult with the doctor before you did that. No, sir, because we ran out. But you, you, and again, didn't reach out to any, the, besides DHHS, didn't reach out to any resources in the community that might have helped you out with a child with such severe emotional issues that you have to use motion sensors and later alarms and locks on things. You, you didn't reach out for any resources before you just decided to stop him taking medication. Before we were, before he ran out, I, I wasn't aware of, like I said, I, DHHS is pretty much the main resource that I was aware of. Did you ever talk to somebody and say, look, I'm at my wit's end here. I did reach out to resources and talk to the judge that you were collecting for. I said, what can I do to get some help here? Did you ever do any of that? I talked to some friends at work. And they but I didn't come ask, up with an idea? I didn't ask for resources. I just vented to them, and nobody suggested anything. I didn't ask. Um, it's rather unusual the way this, this question was answered by you. She said there was one time that your mother-in-law saw Timothy? Yes, sir. One time? Yes, sir. Just the once? Um, after the stroke, yes, sir. Just once in six months was the only time? As far as I remember, yes, sir. That's what I believe. In fact, you went to great lengths to make sure that the grandmother, that's Grammy, that's the person Grammy, you referred yes. to as Grammy, right? Your mother-in-law. You went to great lengths to make sure that she wasn't allowed in your home, didn't you? I mean, that was just because the house was a mess. Did you have some type of tracking device on her to know where she was? Um, she, we had her phone under our, our phone plan, so I could look up on find my iPhone. Because usually when she was, that way um, Paul wanted to know when she was coming to get Gabriel. Oh, gee, sorry. Uh, let me show you what's uh, page 4284. This is a lengthy exchange, but go ahead and read that for the jury. It's from, I believe, March 28th. Uh, soot, mm. uh, stupid thing writing on my watch, that should have said good. 
Uh, Grammy left home about 10 minutes ago. Hopefully she will not beat me there this time, but please have him ready to go. And please keep a very close eye on your messages. I will track her on the app as I head home. Um, hey, I need to, see, to make sure you're seeing these messages. And please make sure his new shoes are on him. Okay, thank you. Um, and do not, do not, do not let Grammy inside. Exclamation point. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, uh, she will probably beat me there, but not by more than a couple minutes. You get clothes on too, please. Okay, uh, go ahead and take Gabriel outside and sit down and stand up against the wall downstairs. You can, it says create the puppy too, but um, OL and then okay. She should be pulling up pretty soon. Okay, I got it. I'm glad you got it, but you better be outside. Uh, he is outside, do you wanna say goodbye? That's Paul's response back to you, right? Yes, and I said, yes, I do, I'll be there in just a minute. Headed to the car now, how's it going there? He said, good, already taped the code rack. I think you should stop there. Um, so you're tracking her movements on your phone as you're driving home. <coughs> At stoplights, yes, sir. Because you're worried that she's going to see a messy house. Yes, sir. And the solution to that is put Gabriel outside when, so that he's outside when she gets there, right? Yes, sir. That was, I'm sorry, I misspoke. That was March 8th, right? Yes, sir. So rather than his grandmother come into the house, into the, even the entryway of the house, in the middle of winter, not middle of winter, on March 8th, your solution was put Gabriel outside, make sure she doesn't come in. Do not, do not, do not let her in the house. Paul was outside Exclamation with point. I wouldn't end up, never put him outside by himself. Paul was outside with him. 4044. <clears throat> uh, please also have some decent clothes on in case I need you to bring a little man out. I'm hoping Grammy does not beat me there. It looks like it will be close. Uh, he said, okay. He said, I will tell you when to take him outside to wait for her. Just please make sure she doesn't leave until after I get there. I haven't been away from Gabriel at night since this all started, and I wanted to give him a hug and kiss before he goes. Uh, okay, go ahead and go outside and wait for her. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes before she gets there. Just please don't let her leave until after I get there. Uh, she is almost there, y'all outside. I would like a response to that message. Um, question, question mark, question mark, question mark. You might need to make Timothy stand with his nose, it says, of against the front door on the inside. Please tell me that you and the child are outside. Seriously, no response. I am almost there, and I am more than a little upset at the moment. You're upset because at that point you don't know whether or not she's going to come into the house, aren't you? I was upset because I wasn't getting a response. That drives me crazy. It's a pet peeve. I hate not getting a response by a text message. Right. So you better have my child standing outside so his grandmother doesn't go inside. And oh, by the way, put my other child up against the front door with his nose against the wall, right? Because he was in trouble for something. I mean, I don't know what happened before that exchange. <clears throat> What would, what, would, what, what would he do to get punished to have him make sure he's standing against the wall with his nose against the door? That's, that was one punishment. He would we'd make him stand against the wall with his nose. And the reason I had it against the door is because I didn't want him getting into anything. That way Paul had a better ability to monitor him. 4123. Remember, we're not saying your younger son's name. Yes. When you get home, please make sure G's face is not a mess and he isn't filthy dirty. And then please get socks and shoes on him and his headphone case in his backpack. And maybe his blue headphones as well. Okay. Uh, also, please watch him, but please have Timothy get those two pumpkins off the front porch and into the trash can before Grammy gets there. Grammy isn't supposed to get there until 6.15, but she was early last time, so she might do that again. I hope not. Uh, Remember to bang loudly on the door three times, please. I will let Timothy know to listen from here, for you here in the next few minutes. And Grammy may just beat me there again, which doesn't make me happy, but anyway. If she does, do not let her in the house this time. Okay, work was fun. I accidentally scratched my palm with a knife opening a bag and then cut my elbow from banging my funny bone on a metal carton. That was Paul's response back to you. Yes. Yeah. So that's three text exchange all <clears throat> within a couple of weeks of each other where you are absolutely consistent that you're, the, the boy's grandmother's, the boy's grandmother, G's grandmother, not come into the house. Right? Yes, sir. To the point where you're tracking her phone while you're driving home from work. Right? Yes, sir. I did. I only tracked it when I was stopped. I wouldn't do that while I was driving, but.
Now, Mr. Johnson asked you about the uh, leg irons. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And you said that those were uh, Timothy's leg irons, correct? Or, no, I'm sorry, that they were, your testimony here today was that those were ordered by Paul, and Paul would use those on Legos, correct? Yes, sir. Actually, I don't think I testified about the, I just, I know that he, per they were Paul's purchase. I don't think I actually testified about the Legos. I think that was a conversation with police. Well, I'll leave the jury to the recollection of that, but I, I, I remember you saying Legos, and I'm not ashamed to admit the fact that I'm actually a fan of Legos, too, so that's why it stuck out in my mind that you just said it earlier today. Um, but to be clear, your testimony is those were Paul's, those were never used on Timothy, right? As far as I know, yes, sir. Okay. Let's look at that top text message, 5460, <coughs> top two text messages. Again, the blue is you. The Wisely transaction is handcuffs and lead cuffs for Timothy from Amazon. Figured it would be okay to get those right away until we can talk about the sensors and stuff. If not, please say so and can cancel the order. Okay. I don't remember that. You, you don't remember that message? No, sir, I don't. Wow. You really do have some memory problems, don't you? Yes, sir. That's common with PTSD. Yeah. Page 5829, if you could read that last text there at the bottom and then continues on to the next page. Uh, he has moved around, so he got the cuffs in front of him instead of behind him. Go ahead and flip the page and read the next one. Uh, I put the cuffs back behind him. I will have to deal with less than two hours of sleep today, but not letting him get away with this BS. I put the cuffs back behind him. That is your text message. Yes, sir. So you use handcuffs on Timothy? I don't remember, honestly. You That's, don't remember using? No, sir. And you said that the transaction, the wisely transaction, was the leg cuffs and handcuffs for Timothy. That was your text message. That's you what the message said. Is that the I don't know as well? You don't remember that one either? There, between the time of the stroke and Timothy's passing, there's, I don't remember a heck of a lot. But somehow you can remember when the police ask you about the leg irons and the cuffs, you say those were for <clears throat> Paul for a TikTok video, right? I, I think that's what I told That's what you told the police? Yes. So you don't remember things, but you have the wherewithal to make it look like, no, no, those don't involve Timothy, those, those were Paul. It's pretty self-serving, isn't it? I'll withdraw the last part. You had the wherewithal to say that the, leg, the, the cuffs that they found belonged to Paul when your text message indicates they were actually for Timothy, right? Apparently, yes, sir. Mr. Johnson asked you about the zip ties. You remember? Yes, sir. Do you ever use zip ties on Timothy? Uh, to attach the um, the personal sensor. Okay. And then I, I, I remember hearing about a conversation about them, yes, on text. I don't remember it, but I, I remember hearing about it when it was read. You remember hearing about a conversation. Did, did, that, did, did that make you stop and go, oh my, oh my goodness, we can't be putting Timothy in, in zip ties? Yes, I mean, that's what I thought here. Yes, yeah. sir. Sure, okay. Well, then this, uh, if you care to read the bottom of 4227, that's Paul's message to you. Uh, oh, this is from earlier. He just won't listen or does something I didn't tell him he could. He just tried claiming his zip cuffs were too tight when I didn't even tighten them to where there's no room for his wrists. This is your response now. Yeah, leave them as they are and I will check them when I get home and you can tell him that. And if he lied about that, he gets himself in even more trouble. You want me to keep going? No, that's fine. Leave them as they are and I will check them when I get home. <laughs> You want to revise your earlier answer to the question when you said that you would have said, oh, no, don't use zip cuffs on Timothy? I don't recall that, sir. I'm sorry. Don't recall that either? Huh? No, sir. Okay. Um, you, you seem to be having a lot of difficulty in when it comes to the text messages that are talking about the things that you either did or want done to Timothy. Um, is, is that where the, the, the memory issues kick in for you? It's most of what happened. It's not just text messages. It's, and it doesn't just involve him. It's, I mean, the events of the whole six months are. So if, if, so all the other text messages that are just about, you know, hey, how's your day going, or get your bike tire fixed, all those types of things, those are all clarity moments, right? <coughs> you, you know, I, I don't, with... I don't know if I, I mean, if you showed me, I don't know if I'd remember them or not, honestly. 
That's, we send a lot of text messages. No, but I'm, what, what, I guess that was a clumsy way of asking that question. You're certainly capable of engaging in a conversation with Paul that's not about anything for Timothy, right? I mean, I would assume so. I don't, I mean, as far as memory goes, my, my memory of those is not. Um, well, let me just, we'll just see what your explanation is for this. So we're, this is 5785. This is June 21st of 2022. This is a week or so after that picture, and we'll get to the picture in a minute that you say that you never saw. Go ahead and read your text message to Paul. Uh, four with hot sauce that he has to eat, and he is has allowed another four without, it says house sauce, but he has to do the hot sauce one first and then set a timer for 30 minutes before you can eat the others. What time is that sent? Uh, 8.05 p.m. To the, to the second, please. Uh, 18. Okay. What's your next text message? Um, 8.05.47. 30, um, 30 seconds or so later. Yes, sir. I was using Siri because yeah. I was driving. Yeah. You could tell by the issues with the text message. Sure. I found enough in change to get Gabriel some chicken nuggets and french fries from Burger King. It's like three bucks total. So we will be home as soon as I do that. Do you remember sending the hot sauce text? I don't remember sending either one of these texts, sir. don't remember sending either one of those? No, sir. I don't. But you can process that Timothy needs to eat some bread with hot sauce on it. But you scrounged up enough change to make sure that G gets some chicken nuggets and fries. We're Within 30 seconds, processing that all in your mind, sending it all out in a text message, right? Apparently, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he's serious. Let's talk about the photograph. It's <clears throat> People's 36A. Uh, Mr. Johnson asked you about it, so if you remembered the text exchange, <coughs> including the photograph of Timothy, right? Yes, sir. And, uh, just, oh, I, the jury's seen that a couple of times. I don't think they need to see it again right now. Let's go ahead and read the exchange there, starting with the message that Paul sent to you with the photograph. Um, Timothy tried to sneak food. I yelled at him, and then he became momentarily unresponsive, and then I saw this. He's bone thin, Mama. I think I think we need to actually feed him. Okay. And what's your response to that? I said, Kay, give him bread, please. And then I said, I hear you. Give PB sandwiches and water. You want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. The unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. Okay. And go ahead and move to the next page. Uh... Also, it's no wonder he's hardly capable of standing. Then that's one with photographs of his legs, right? Yeah, and then I said, I'm in court. So was it really your testimony that you never saw that photograph? I do not recall seeing it. I, that was it. I feel like I want to throw up. You don't recall seeing the photograph, right? No, sir. The unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. You literally use the word see in your text message about see what you mean. But your testimony today is, I didn't, I didn't look at the photograph. I didn't see the photograph. Yes, sir. That's, I mean, it's a phrase that you use. It's a phrase that you use? I see what you mean? Yes, sir. Isn't that usually when you see the things that the people are talking about? Sometimes. Mm. I'm wondering why your response to your son saying that your other child is bone thin and needs to eat, actually feed him. That's the phrase. Actually feed him, right? That's what he said, yes, sir. Right. And your response to that is, K, give him bread, please, or bread with peanut butter. Is that right? Yes, sir. Not, oh, my goodness. This is, if he's that hungry, yeah, make him, a, make him some chicken nuggets. Make him some pizza. Make him some pizza rolls. Make him any one of a dozen or so things that were in your freezer or your refrigerator, any of that. But that wasn't your response, was it? No, sir. I was, like I said, I was in court. I just was scrambling for an answer. You were in court, but you were able to send one, two, three text messages before you said you are in court, right? Yes, sir. And the first answer you come up with to feed your child was give him bread? I don't remember what I was thinking at the time, sir. I just know that I was distracted because I was in the middle of stuff with court. But not so distracted that you can say, well, the unresponsiveness is probably fake, but I see what you mean. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know what was going on when that was sent. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't.
Mr. Johnson asked you about the hot sauce that you uh, ordered, and we saw the bottles of hot sauce. Those weren't <clears throat> those weren't just ordered from Meyer, were they? No. You had to special order those, didn't you? On Amazon, yes, sir. Um, I think you said the reason that you couldn't just get those from Meyer for your grocery delivery things is because they just didn't have hot sauce, right? No, they didn't have that type of hot sauce. That type of hot sauce. Yes, sir. Okay. How did you how did you conclude that that was the type of hot sauce that Timothy? How do I put this? Both loved and got to be used as a punishment? Because the, the hot sauce that I had and the ones that I could access on the apps, he, could, he loved those hot sauces, so. So you had to go out of your way to find one even hotter, one that he didn't like? Yes, sir. Okay. And the, the hot sauce started as Paul's idea? Yes, sir. How do you come up with the idea to do hot sauce if Timothy likes hot sauce? Um, well, he said that, that if he, I guess he'd read something, if I remember correctly. I don't, I mean, this, the conversation's not, I mean, it's vague at best, but um, from what I remember, he'd said something about, he'd read something about something really hot, some new something. He's like, oh, this might be an idea to do it with a, a sauce that he doesn't like. So you tested out other hot sauces before you got to that point, and because he didn't react, you figured, let's just keep increasing the heat? Is that it? No, that, I mean, I don't remember which, I mean, how, how many I ordered, but I just went with something that was, that, was super, that was hotter than what I could get. So you tried to punish him with a lower hot sauce, but he, he doesn't respond, so then you increase how hot it is, right? I didn't try with the lower because he already knew he liked the lower hot sauce. <clears throat> how did it even occur to you to be a punishment for him for, to find one even hotter then? How is that even a punishment if he likes hot sauce? He never liked even the hot sauce, did he? Huh? Yes, he did. He, he, he ate spicy food. You heard, you heard Paul's testimony yesterday. I did. And you heard him say that he never wanted to eat those slices of bread with the hot sauce on it. Didn't you? You heard that testimony. That's what he, I heard him say, yes. And, and, and your response to that in a lot of these text messages was make sure you use even more hot sauce than <coughs> you did before, right? If that's what you say, the text messages say. Oh, you just read the one that said he can have four, and then he can wait 30 minutes, and then he can have some without hot sauce on it. You read that one, right? Yes, sir. But again, you don't remember sending that text message. No, sir. But aliens didn't take a hold of your phone and take over your body or anything like that, did they? No, sir. No. Mr. Johnson didn't ask you, so I'll just go ahead and ask you. You used a number of other physical methods of punishing Timothy, didn't you? Define number. Yeah, okay, fine. Two. You made him do wall sits? Uh, one time. And that was Paul's suggestion as well. He said, oh, this, this used to drive me crazy. Um, I guess he said that, Paul said that his dad and stepmom had used that as a punishment with him. And so we decided to give it a try. And Timothy could have cared less. He, he what? He could not have cared less? No. So, so being made to stand as if there's no support under your legs, he was, he was okay to do that? I mean... How I, long did you have him do it for? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes? Yes, sir. When was that? I don't remember, honestly. And running the stairs? Yes, sir. You had him do that a lot, didn't you? I wouldn't say a lot. I, it was some. In fact, there was one, there's one text exchange in here where you talk about make sure that he does it a lot, even if it's raining and cold outside, right? That's what the text says, yes, sir. And Paul talks about doing it chasing style at one point, where he follow, he chases them up and down the stairs, right? Yes, sir. And the stairs we're talking about are outside. Yes, sir. They're, they're not inside. Back. No, they're out back. So cold, rainy. Yep, go go run the stairs outside. What what did he do? what was the awful crime he had done to warrant doing that? I don't remember, sir. Page 6011, bottom text. I wonder how it would feel to have that hot sauce on your private parts. I'm not saying touch them there, not at all, but dripping a little bit there is that horrible. Did you have to ask that question? I wouldn't think so. I don't remember that. I can't even imagine saying that. But you did. I know, but I can't even imagine it. About your child. Right? Who at that point was in the middle of an ice bath that had lasted at least two and a half hours at that point, right? 
What are you asking if I said that? I'm asking you if you said that when your child was in an ice bath for two and a half hours at that point in time, because this is 425 in the afternoon and you're watching on the camera from work and texting with Paul about what he's supposed to be doing with him, with him in the tub, right? I mean, if that's what was, I, I don't remember. I, if that's what it says, I'm not arguing that. I'm not trying to argue that. I'm just saying, I don't know. It just popped in your head today. Yeah, I wonder what hot sauce on your private parts would be like. That. I have no idea where it came from. No I have idea. no idea. Did you ever try that hot sauce? No, I don't like food as spicy as Timothy. Mm. About the hottest I can handle is um, jalapeno cheddar Cheetos. I'm, I'm with you there. I can't handle hot sauce either. So you never even, but administering it as a punishment multiple times, you thought was okay without even trying it yourself first. Yes, I have a very weak stomach, and so I didn't want to throw up. Um, let's talk about the ice maker for a second. Uh, People's 31 and People's 32. Yes, sir. You recognize that as the ice maker? Yes, sir. It's the countertop ice maker. Right. You said it makes about a cup and a half of ice? Yes, sir. Right? This is a cup and a half of ice in your mind? No, I've measured it. I actually used it to, um, you can get, I don't know if you've ever had a frappe from McDonald's, but uh, Walmart sells a powder mix that you can, you add uh, milk and ice to. And it's really good and it's only like a dollar, <coughs> three dollars at McDonald's. And so the, it calls for, I, for some reason, I want to say it actually calls for more than a cup and a half, but that's all I could get out of it. But yes, that's in a measuring cup, like a sitting up measuring cup, it's a cup and a half. That's all it does. And the, uh, I think your testimony earlier was you didn't know that ice was being used. Is that right? As far in as In the what? cold baths. Not unless it was specified. I mean, there was, there, was, there was sometimes where it said cold and sometimes where it said ice. I didn't say I didn't know it was being used. Okay. It was, if, it, if it was cold, it was supposed to be just cold. But all you would use would be the ice that, was, that you get out of the ice maker. You wouldn't make any more ice and put it away and no. store it up so we could have extra for the next day, would you? Not that I remember ever doing, no. Okay. Page 5823. Those are all your text messages. Um, oh yeah, I know, but I wasn't nice tonight either. Made me feel horrible, but no way was he getting away with that crap. Um, let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, he'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work, another when I get home. Um, and I said, might want to toss that, the ice that is made into some Ziploc bags in the freezer tomorrow for if we need a bunch more. You want to change your earlier answer? No, because we never did it. Not that I, I mean, you can ask Paul, you can recall him, but I don't remember ever tossing it. But your suggestion to him was, hey, we need to be ready to make more ice and using the ice baths, right? That's what the text message said, but we never saved the ice. So that was your intention, was to have a backup plan if you needed to have more ice, right? That's what the text says. And that was, Mar that was June 27th, or excuse, yes, June 27th. That was about a week before Timothy died, right? Yes, sir. And that's about two weeks after you sent the text message with the picture that you didn't see. Yes, sir. Mr. Roberts? Yes, sir. Uh, sidebar, please. Sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I, I always, I used to do this in private practice, so it was always tough to take breaks during examination, but as much as I hate to do it, uh, I think it's a good time for a break right now. We've gone uh, over an hour and 45 minutes, so we're going to take a 15, a eh, little bit shorter than 15 minute break, and uh, come back at 3.30. Treat one of the exhibits. Oh, thank you. All right. So we'll see you back in about 15 minutes. Please rise.
may be seated. Uh, anything for the record before we break, Mr. Roberts? No. Mr. Johnson? No, sir. Thank right. you. Well, we are in recess.
Connor, right, back on the record in 23110 FC, People versus Shonda Vander Ark. This jury is secure in the jury room. Anything before we bring him out, Mr. Roberts? Mr. Johnson. All right, please rise. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Ark, I think we we're just finishing up. I was just talking about the ice bath with you. And again, your text was, let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, he'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work and another when I get home. So let's, let's break apart that sentence for just a moment if we can. And that was on March 27th. Right, so yeah, about nine days or so before Timothy passes away. Let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, let's start there. This is at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're saying he is not allowed to go to sleep, right? Yes, sir. So 3 o'clock in the morning, your 15-year-old child is not allowed to be sleeping. And if he does, he gets an ice bath, right? Yes, sir. And he'll get another ice bath, i.e., there's already been an ice bath prior to this text being sent, correct? No, sir. That, that was, it would be one and then another is what it says. Okay, well, let me read it again and make sure I, maybe I've misread it. Let him know that if he tries to sleep at all, he'll get another ice bath sometime before you leave for work and another when I get home. There's two another's in there, isn't there? Yes, sir. The first another refers to the first ice bath. In other words, there's already been an ice bath, right? I mean, I don't know. It's, I'm not questioning the, the, what's in the text, but I don't know. Okay. And then sometime before he, before Paul leaves work, he, he'll get another ice bath, and then another one when you get home. So two ice baths, in addition to the one he's already had, right? If that's what it says. And that's for the crime of sleeping. I don't know what the, uh, the original, whatever happened before that. But you know what it was to, to get him to not do another one, right? Yes, sir. Let him know that's that if he says. tries to sleep at all. That's what it says, yes, sir. Yeah. Might want to toss the ice that is made into some Ziploc bags in the freezer tomorrow for if we need a bunch more. I think that kind of speaks for itself. We'll move on. Let me show you an exchange um, from May 9th, 2022. This is pages 5348. 5348. Sorry, 5347. <clears throat> so, give me just a second. I apologize. <coughs> okay, start at page 5340, and this is from May 9th. I don't think you need to read the top one. That's Paul's message. Go ahead and start reading there. From May 9th, 2022. Um, what is daddling anyway? Um, please make sure Timothy goes into his room with the alarm on when you leave. I should be home not too long after you go, as long as you, as long as you before you go. And please let me know where you put the alarm when you leave. All right, let me stop you right there. This is May 9th. And again, you're referring to an alarm, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. This go is, ahead. okay. Go ahead. I know just, what that's referring just, to. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. KK, thanks. Uh, YW, you're welcome. Um, I logged out of that for you, but you will not be allowed to have any devices tomorrow before work unless you manage unless you manage to get everything done, I assign to M standards, which will not be easy. I'm not sure what part of Timothy going nowhere but the bathroom without being watched closely, but he stole a bunch more of the Easter basket today and hid the wrappers behind the washer and dryer because he obviously wasn't washed as he should have been. Okay, so at that, so at this point on May 9th, you're saying that Timothy needs to be watched if he goes everywhere except for the bathroom, right? He needs to be watched, yes, sir. For committing the crime of what? Uh, 
we had a combined Easter basket that year. And so I had divvied it out between everybody and he stole some that was Gabriel uh, Butz G's and uh, I don't know if it was Paul's or mine, but he's he'd already had his portion of it. So taking candy from an Easter basket means that, that he gets watched and can't have any privacy anywhere except the bathroom, right? Yes, sir. Okay, keep going. Um, then I, it was a star. What part of watching Timothy closely was unclear? Sheesh. Let me stop you right there. What okay. part of watching Timothy was unclear? Why was it that you believed at that point that Paul wasn't watching Timothy? I was correcting. It's the little star. I was correcting what, um, where was it? Usually if I use the star like that, it was for, um, to correct something that Siri messed up or something I messed up. I don't know, I'm not sure. I've only got these messages. I'm not sure. Okay, but but the, the part that you read there said what again? What part of watching Timothy closely was unclear, sheesh. Okay, so you were upset at that point that Paul wasn't watching Timothy closely enough, correct? Yes, sir. And the only way you would know that Paul wasn't watching Timothy closely enough is if you were also watching Timothy closely enough, correct? I don't know at that point. I don't know if somehow I found out about the Easter basket. This is, well, this is, hold on. <coughs> okay, yeah, this was, we must have been at a baseball game. It was 6.20 p.m., 6.43 p.m. So, yeah, I must have been watching him from. So you're at a baseball game for G, and, and you're watching Timothy, Timothy and yes. Paul to make sure Paul's watching Timothy closely enough. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Do you remember all this text exchange? No, sir, I don't. You don't remember this at all? No. Okay, go ahead. Keep reading. Okay. Okay, there's no way that was today, Mama. Don't blame me. He that's literally Paul, right? Yes. I mean to cut you off, but that's Paul, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He literally never had the opportunity to steal anything. I made sure of that. Now, the response to that is? Uh, when he was putting clothes on my bed, he did actually. And watch it's ye tone with me. Should have been the not ye. Right. Um, so you knew that Timothy had done something when he was putting clothes away. Yes, right? sir. And the only way the, you would know that is by monitoring the cameras, right? Yes, sir. Um, I never gave him permission to even set foot in your room. I swear he must have done it when I went to the bathroom. Okay, keep going. He's trying to get me in trouble here, this Mom. This is all Paul, right? Yeah, this is okay. Paul. And I told him to go to his room when I did. I brought him downstairs with me so his sneaky butt escaped. I watched him go into his room. And what's your response there? We uh, I said he never. He said he never asked, but I've mentioned before you need to take him downstairs when you go to the bathroom so he can't escape. All right, yes. Let, let me just, okay. that's, I think we can stop there. You don't remember sending these text messages. No, sir. No memory from this time period. No, sir. Because of all the blackouts, all the tunnel vision, all the PTSD, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He said he never asked, but I've mentioned before you need to take him downstairs when you go to the bathroom so he can't escape. That was what you said though, right? Yes, sir. You actually used the phrase escape in relation to your 15-year-old child. Apparently, yes, sir. As if he was some prisoner. No, sir. Well, who else needs to escape but a prisoner? I'll withdraw that. May 9th, right? I, it's, yeah, that's what it said. You don't remember that at all? No, sir. When was Mother's Day 2022? I don't remember, honestly. If I told you it was May 8th, would you have reason to doubt that? No, sir, not at all, I believe you. Mr. Johnson was asking you, uh, and you were very eager to tell him about something that you remembered happening on sometime just after Mother's Day, right? Correct. That Timothy got on a scale and weighed 108 pounds. 104. 104 pounds, I'm sorry, I'm glad you corrected me. I wrote it down as 104 pounds, right? It's amazing your memory is that good that you can remember what your son weighed sometime after May 8th, but you can't remember talking about having him escape. Would you care to explain that to the jury? Yes, sir, that happened with the PTSD, with everything else that was going on. I would, especially when I got stressed, it would, the, the tunnel vision, and I mean, I can't, for lack of a better term, blacking out. Um, it, pretty much any time my stress level went up, and it, I mean, it wasn't up that day that, that we did the way the dog. So you can't remember all of these text messages about the ice baths and the hot sauce and the zip ties and the handcuffs, but you remember over 18 months ago that your son weighed 108 pounds sometime after Mother's Day of 2022, correct? 104, yes. 104. Sir. You, well, you it was, got it down. You're right. 104 he made, pounds. Well, he made a, a comment that just things like that will stick out to me sometimes. And when, when he couldn't pick the dog up, 
bear in mind this is a service dog in training, so he's he's used to being getting commands. And Timothy, I remember he put his hands on his hips and looked at Sharma and said, "Next time you get to pick me up." And the dog tilted his head like I don't understand that command, and it just that struck me. It sticks in my head. I don't know why, but that sticks in my head. What day was it? I don't know what day of the week it was, sir. It was during the week. But how long after Mother's Day was it then? I don't remember, sir. I know the reason I know it was after Mother's Day is because. Um, mom, my mother-in-law, for a for probably the last four or five years, as a Mother's Day gift, has given me um, cherry tomato plants and then miniature cucumber plants, and I keep them in like plant bags. I normally have a black thumb, I admit it, but I've managed to keep these um, alive pretty well. Um, and I had just when we came when I came upstairs to weigh the dog. I had just gone downstairs and checked on my plants, so the plants were outside then. So I know it was after Mother's Day. I just don't know when. Plants never missed a feeding, then, did they? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. What's argumentative about it? She's, a, she's proud of herself. She's plants alive. Plants never missed a feeding. Mr. Roberts says it's an irrelevant question. So, sustain. So, your testimony is Timothy weighed 104 pounds sometime after May 9th, correct? Yes, sir. That doesn't look anything like 104 pounds, does it? No, sir. And that's not even a month, that's barely a month after May 9th, isn't it? Yes, sir. I lose weight very quickly. I'm assuming he got that from me. And again, the response to this was give him bread, right? If that's what the text message says, yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson asked you about the uh, some text messages back and forth between you and Paul during the ice bath the last day, the day before Timothy dies. Um, and you were observing that ice bath from work, right? I glanced in on it. I wasn't observing the whole time. I didn't. I couldn't. You weren't observing the entire time. Not the entire time. I glanced in on it. Whenever you'd send a text message, you were also looking at the camera, weren't you? No, I wanted Paul to think I was. And Mr. Johnson asked you if you remember the text about honestly to tell me if you think this is all fake. Remember that? Vaguely. You vaguely remember that text? Yes, sir. So you can remember the text where it, it, it tries to provide you with a defense to this, but you can't remember any of the horrible things that you did to Timothy. Is that your testimony here today? I don't have any control over what I can remember and what I don't, sir. You recall Paul's testimony yesterday about what he did in response to that photograph that he sent you and about saying we really need to feed him, Mama? I think we actually need to feed him, I believe, is the actual text. Yes, sir. I remember his testimony. And what was his testimony? that he gave him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I guess he cooked him some eggs. That was the first time you'd heard about that, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And that was not his instructions, was it? No, sir, but that was fine. I had no problem with that. Well, why did you just tell him to make him some eggs in the first place, then? Because I didn't think of it. I was in the middle of something. I think we actually need to start feeding him, and the only thing you can come up with, instead of Paul thinking to give him scrambled eggs, is give him some bread. That's all you could think of. It's I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was in the middle of something. I wasn't. I wouldn't have thought of eggs anyway, not in the middle of the day. You said that you would, the, the punishments, and I guess this 3 o'clock in the morning one about not letting him sleep or he gets an ice bath, so he's got to be awake at 3 o'clock in the morning. You said that was because he would keep you guys up in the middle of the night or wake you up in the middle of the night? Yes. Yes, sir. Can you, and again, you did really well on the logic and reason por reasoning portion of the, the LSAT exam. Can you explain the reasoning behind keeping somebody awake when they're keeping you awake? To show them how it feels. But they're already awake, aren't they? It made sense to me, sir. That's, now that you ask it, but it, it doesn't seem to make sense. But it made sense to me at the time. You didn't actually mean that as a punishment. That, that was just out of spite. You were just angry with Timothy for keeping you awake, weren't you? No, it was meant as a punishment, sir. But it's also a punishment for yourself because you have to stay awake as well, don't you? I don't sleep much anyway. But yes, sir. Or Paul has to stay awake, right? Yes, sir. Paul's an insomniac as well. You testified that you gave Paul, you gave Timothy a warm bath the night before he passed away, that last night, July 5th. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. That was the first time you've told anybody connected to this case that you'd done that, isn't it? Yes, sir. You never told the police officers you did that, did you? No, sir. <coughs> I imagine a warm bath sounds just like, it's just what it sounds like, right? You, you got him, you took him to the bath, you grew a warm bath for him, and you put him in the bathtub, right? Yes, sir.
This is hours before he dies, right? Yes, sir. You look like that when you put him in the bathtub? Do we have a trash can? I did. I placed a trash can. You did? Yeah. Would you like the beard removed? Right. Please rise.
You may be seated. Well, back in the record, 23110 FC, people versus Shonda Vanderark. The jury has secured the jury room. Anything before we bring them out? Mr. Roberts. Yeah, one thing, Judge, my client was shown three exhibits. Can we, for the record, get, get the number of those exhibits that you were shown? Yeah, oh. what were the numbers, Mr. Roberts? I mean, so, right. 34, 35, 33. Okay. 33, 34, and 35. All right, Ms. Van Der Ark, you feel well enough to con uh, continue, ma'am? Yes, sir. All right, let's bring the jury out. Please rise. You may be seated. Mr. Roberts, you can continue. Thank you. Uh, before we get back to the question I originally, originally asked Ms. Van der Ark, um, you just obviously had quite a, uh, a visual reaction there to the jury, a physical reaction in front of the jury looking at those photographs. That's not the first time you've seen these photographs, though, is it? No, sir. In fact, you sat in this very courtroom not even a week ago on Friday when we had a hearing about those photographs and looked at those photographs, didn't you? I did not look at them last week, sir. You didn't look at them last week? No, sir, I did not. But you've looked at them before, haven't you? It was, I think it was at the prelim, and I just felt, I gagged that day, too. It just wasn't as bad. Didn't throw up, though? No, it wasn't as bad. So if there's video from that hearing that we had last week where you thumbed through the photographs, including the autopsy photos without vomiting, do you just not remember that as well? We didn't have the autopsy, we didn't have those photos over at our table, sir. You, it won't be on the video, I can promise you that. Well, then I'll return to my original question. Those three photographs depict your son hours after you supposedly put him in a warm bath. Did he look like that when you put him in the warm bath, but for the fact that he was alive? I did not look at him, sir. He was 15. I tried to give him his privacy. It may sound lame, but I, I intentionally look away. That's, that's why Paul did most of his baths, is because he's 15 and I didn't think that was appropriate. So you didn't put him in the bathtub? No, he was already in the tub. I just did, looked. Did you get him out of the tub? Um, I don't remember. I think I think so. Later that night, I would assume so. Later that night, how long was he in the tub? Well, night to me is any time after work. So. Okay. How long was he in the tub? I don't. I mean, I don't think it was long after I got home, but I don't know. And again, you didn't tell the police officers this when they talked to you about what had happened the night before, did you? I, I don't remember. I, apparently, I didn't. Well, so you don't remember what you told the police officers? I remember part of it, but, I mean, I'm, I, if you say I didn't tell them, then I, I trust your word there. If you told the police officers that you noticed he was skinny, so you made him some bread and put some butter on it and watched him eat three-quarters of it and then sent him to bed, is that, does that refresh your recollection about what you told the officers? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't remember saying it, but... So you don't remember saying those things to the police officer? No, sir. And those things clearly didn't happen, did they? No, sir. How did he get into his room that night? I don't remember, sir. Last page of the text messages. You can go ahead and read that very top text message, please. Please set your alarm for 6 a.m. I ended up dragging him back to his small room because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. He's still trying to be stupid, but I will tell you more tomorrow while I take you to work describing how many different ways I proved that he's still faking. He's still doing it though, it's beyond ridiculous. I ended up dragging him back to his small room because I wasn't going to risk him having access to the tub or other things overnight. Plan was for him to sleep in the bathroom, wasn't it? I don't remember, sir. I mean, I know that if in the text message, but if that's what the text message says. Okay. And you had to drag him back to the small room. Again, the small room being the closet, right? Yes, sir. Supposedly that he wanted to sleep in. Yes, sir. But you had to drag him there. Why was that? Well, dragging, I mean, that could be anywhere from grabbing hold of an arm and because someone's not being cooperative. That's, 
that, that can be a range of things, sir, so I don't know what I was referring to there. You've seen the video, haven't you? No, sir. I haven't seen any videos. Do you need your, do you need your memory refreshed about him getting back in the small room that night? No, sir. I mean, like I said, I'll take the... I just, I don't remember actually doing it. Did you physically pull him into the room that night? Yes, sir. I mean... And did you set, did you push him down onto the ground so that he was laying and facing the camera? If that's what it shows, then yes, sir. And did you put, position his face towards the camera? If that's what it shows, I... And did you tell him that he owes you the biggest apology on the face of the earth and then maybe he can get out to go to the bathroom? If that's what it shows, sir, I, I don't remember. And did you return a little while later because he had rolled over away from the camera so that you couldn't see him on camera? If that's what it shows, I don't and, remember any of this. And did you tell him you don't need to open your mouth every time you breathe, dummy, and then hold his mouth shut? I don't know what I said, sir. I mean, I'll take your word for that's what the video Oh, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's play the video for you. Sir, that's not necessary. If that's what you're saying it shows, I believe you. I'm not. So you're acknowledging that the night before Timothy died, hours before he died, you dragged him, looking like that, back into his small room, positioned him in front of a camera, told him he owed you an apology, then came back later because he rolled over away from the camera and held his mouth closed and said, see, you don't have to open your mouth when you breathe, dummy? You're acknowledging you did those things. If that's what the camera shows, yes, sir. You didn't put him in a warm bath that night, did you? Yes, sir, I did. But you had to drag him away from it? If that's what it says, I don't... I know that he, I, I know he had a hoodie on. You said the locks on the refrigerator were there because he got into the refrigerator, and if I heard your testimony correctly, he ate a pound of frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. That was back. And a bag of chicken nuggets? A frozen bag of chicken nuggets, yes, sir. And, and frozen hamburger? Yes, sir. The hamburger was not frozen. It was refrigerated. But frozen chicken nuggets? Frozen chicken nuggets and raw bacon. And raw bacon? Yes, sir. Frozen raw bacon? No, it was in the refrigerator. The, the frozen stuff was the chicken nuggets? The chicken, chicken nuggets. That was the only frozen, yes, sir. Did you think he had an affinity for frozen food? I, I didn't know. The, frozen, the only thing he ate frozen was the chicken nuggets. Is that why you sent a text message to Paul while he was in the ice bath at 3.43 that afternoon and said, oh, okay, crazy thought. Tell him if he actually sits up by himself and stays sitting up, he will get some pizza rolls. Don't tell him it's only two, and I'm okay if they are frozen rather than cooked. Why'd you send that text message? I don't know. Don't remember that even either? No, sir. So you're not worried about him eating frozen pizza rolls if he sits up? If that's what it says. You've heard it read several times. Yes, You're not sir. doubting that's what it says, right? Yes, sir. Just another one of those memories that you just just gone from your head, right? Yes, sir. So when you told Detective Pisky that the reason the locks were on the refrigerator is because he would he would get into them and he'd leave the doors open, that was that was a lie, wasn't it? No, that was also true. He did that as well. How does putting the locks on fix that problem? He can't get into it then, so it doesn't get left open. Oh, no, so, he was he the only one. so you admit that he was not allowed access to the refrigerator or the freezer or to the pantry? As far as and the refrigerator and freezer, after we put the locks on. He couldn't get into them, could he? No, not after that. And the pantry had an alarm on it as well, didn't it? No, it didn't. Okay. We'll move on. We can circle back to that one. Let's talk about some of the other things that you told Detective Peasky. <coughs> you told Detective Peasky that long, long after the stroke happened in January, Timothy went on a hunger strike. That was a lie, wasn't it? Not long after. and No, that was not a lie. That was the truth. He went on a hunger strike. Yes, sir, he did. It, was, it, it wasn't immediately, but it was within a few days. And uh, a hunger strike is refusing to eat, right? Yes, sir. So he's refusing to eat food not long after your husband has a stroke, right? Yes, sir. Then you don't need to put locks on the refrigerator or freezer, do you? If he's refusing to eat. He, he stopped. He, he actually he started eating again. He started eating again, so then you decided he's been on a hunger strike, he's eating again, so now we better lock up the food. No, I did the, the locks to protect him because he could have 
He could have killed himself eating those chicken nuggets. I didn't put the locks on after he did the hamburger or the bacon, but the chicken nuggets, he could. it was raw chicken. Chicken nuggets are cooked, aren't they? They're pre-cooked. Are they? I didn't even think about that. But it's okay if he has a frozen pizza roll or two, if he sits up, right? Yes, sir. February 18th, 2022. Find out what he has snuck right the heck now. Because I know he has snuck all stuff since you weren't doing what you were supposed to. What do you mean you didn't know he was awake? You both should have been awake at 1030. I am not happy. You know he wasn't just sitting there. Check the brownies in the kitchen. Check everything not locked away. Check where the flipping keys have been. So starting February, you had to lock up all the food. Make sure he's not getting into the brownies, right? And all of the food was never locked. We had it. There's no pictures of it, but one of the, the lower cupboards had um, quite a bit of canned food in it, and he actually would get into that meat stuff out of cans as well. But there was never there was never a lock on that lower cupboard. I don't know if they. So I, I know they took pictures of it because I showed it to them. So he had access to one cupboard of food. Um, the pantry wasn't locked it, it, the whole time. I know that. But the, there were times the pantry was locked or had an alarm on it, wasn't there? It, it, there was no alarm. I never got one for the pantry. I don't, I mean, I've heard the text messages. I don't remember there being a lock on the pantry, but I've heard the 228, messages. check his breath. I can almost guarantee he's eaten something. He was chewing on something when he walked downstairs. You and I will be talking about this on a later date when we're both home. Paul's response, yes, he grabbed some chips. I know. So he wasn't allowed to eat chips on 228 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Couldn't have some chips. Right? I mean, it's, I, I don't know what happened in that situation. I've well, you didn't say, make sure he didn't get into the frozen chicken nuggets because it might kill him. You said, find out what he's been into, and Paul says he's been into chips. Right? That's what it says, yes, sir. So I imagine the next text message then is, oh, great, that's fine, he can have some chips. Well, no, the point of it was he was sneaking things. He knew better. Couldn't have chips. It wasn't that he couldn't have chips. It was that he would sneak things. It so was how would dishonest. He, how, would, how would he earn getting chips? He didn't have to earn them. All he had to do was ask. I was trying to teach him not to sneak. He snuck. It wasn't just food. He would sneak in the garage. He would sneak toys. He, he um, snuck around and messed with his, his baby brother's homeschooling materials. I've got like flashcards and stuff for him. He messed with those and got them all out of order. March 4th is around the time that you that, that you acknowledged that he was in zip cups. You, you, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but I don't think we clarified your final text message where you said, you know what, we will start cutting off the ends once they are tight so he can't do that. Is that one of the can't remember texts too? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. March 19th. Okay, that only makes partial sense. What did he grab? LOL. Paul's response, I don't know, chips or something small he had in his pocket. Okay, tell him he just restarted his not eating again. That was you. March 19th. Tell him he's just restarted his not eating again. So he took chips. So the punishment for that is now he's not allowed to eat anything again, right? If that's, I don't remember, sir. Don't remember that one. Okay. Talking about the punishment outside, um, Paul says, wall sits question mark, and then you say, push him until it looks like he is about to fall over, please. That was for running up and down the stairs, wasn't it, on April 14th? If that's what it says, yes, sir. So you wanted Paul to run him up and down the stairs until he was ready to fall over? That's what the text says. What was, what crime had he committed to warrant being physically driven until you fall over? I have no idea, sir. April 18th. He managed to come upstairs, yank the locks off of both the freezer and the pantry without you noticing, and he stole a bunch of crap that squished and rattled and did all sorts of stuff, and you slept through everything. KK, no devices until tomorrow, at least my lunch other than messaging, until at least my lunch other than messaging me, which would be very little. 
You remember that? I don't remember it, no, sir. So, but if the text message said he yanked the locks off the pantry, then there were locks on the pantry as of April 18th, right? Apparently. <clears throat> 426, almost freaking caught him again. I want all the fruit in the fridge, freezer, or pantry, and those locked. So locking up all the food again on April 26, correct? Well, the cupboard still was never locked. And what was in the cupboard? Um, canned, a bunch of canned stuff. There's a bunch of cans in there. A bunch of cans in there? Yeah. So you're okay with him getting into a bunch of canned stuff? I mean, he got into it all the time. So, so what, do you go to the drawer, get a can opener, open up the can, put it on the stove, warm the stuff up? No, he didn't. He, just, he would eat it straight out of the can. But that is weird. Huh? That didn't worry you? Well, when I discovered it, it did, but I just never put anything on that cupboard. So what, what caused this almost freaking caught him and when all the food in the fridge and the freezer of the pantry, those locked up, April 28th? I have no idea, sir. Without having it in there, I don't know what caused it. It's likely related to the text before that, isn't it? I, I don't know. He keeps pulling his arms down, and that doesn't set off the camera alarm, so please watch him for that. Well, why did he have his arms up? He was standing against the wall with his arms on his head. So he'd have to do that for long periods of time, right? Stand there, but he didn't have to have his arms up the whole time, but... I'd set a time limit on how long he had to have his arms up. And you're you're either you're watching or watching an alarm to make sure his arm doesn't go down, right? From the sound of it. The uh, response to you about locking to, from Paul about locking up the food. It's just he pulled the pantry door lock. What do you mean he just pulled it? Did he take it off? Paul says, yes, that part that attaches to the wall is dangling right now due to sticky locks. Okay, get another one on it right away. Last I saw, they were on the floor in a bag in my room. And you need to make him run up and down the stairs a ton for that, even in the cold and rain. So trying to take some food, not in his cabinet full of canned goods, and pulling, a, pulling the alarm, the pantry lock off, means he doesn't get food, it all gets locked away, and he has to run the stairs, even in the cold and rain, right? him being deceitful and sneaky. He was deceitful and sneaky a lot, wasn't he? Yes, sir, he was. Did it ever hurt you it's because he was hungry? He was that way a lot, well before there was issues, well before the stroke. I mean, he, we always had issues with him over that, but his, that his stepmom warned me about that. Well before there were, you said well before the issues, what, what, what issues? Before his first hunger strike, before any of this, he was extremely sneaky. Did it ever occur to you that this is not the way to deal with a person who's been on a hunger strike? Locking up their food, locking up their access to food, punishing them when they, when they try to take food? Did, did, did that ever occur to you with your, your brilliant legal mind, as it was, that that wasn't a good idea? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. April 27th, Timothy is no longer allowed anywhere near the fridge, freezer, or pantry, or any other place where food is. So now it sounds like he can't even get into his cabinet full of canned goods, right? I mean, that's what I said. We never put it, there was never a lock on that. But he wasn't allowed near it. I right? Mean, if that's what it says, I don't. That was, that was April 27th. Just a few days before, somehow he manages to be 104 pounds, which, as we've heard from the testimony this morning, is still a good 30 pounds under average weight, right? Um, well, my, my kids are, most of them are slim. Paul is 6'1 and 130. He doesn't even hit the 134 for a 5'8 person. And I lose weight extremely easily. So hit the, he, at 104, he looked average. February 14th, I may need some help with it, but I am about to get a lock for the pantry door and a lock for the fridge and both freezers. And then we won't leave any food out of those areas, and he won't have access to unlock those. Okay, Paul's response. Your response, if you disagree, please say so, but he is not going to win this. I may need some help with it, but I'm out, about to get a... Oh, that's the same thing. So you were bound and determined that he wasn't going to win and get food without asking for permission first, weren't you? Even no, if that meant locking up all the food. No, sir, I was bound to determine he would stop being deceitful and sneaky. <clears throat> he is not going to win this. Because he was being stubborn. He kept sneaking. He snuck stuff. We found out, actually, it was well before the stroke. Um, 
Paul discovered it. This was before his first hunger strike, I mean, before anything. Um, Paul went down to the downstairs bathroom one day, and I think it was, I want to say it was at least three cupboards, if not four across, and I guess he'd opened one of the cupboards, and Timothy had snuck a bunch of stuff. I mean, there was wrappers and cans and all sorts of stuff. He did that, I mean, that was, I don't remember if it was before or after my oldest son's wedding, but it was, it was around that time. And again, your response to all of this, rather than to seek some professional help for him because of these eating issues that he apparently has, is to restrict even further his access to food, right? And then watch his every move on a camera or with a motion sensor or with an alarm, right? My response was to try to, t to prevent him from being deceitful and sneaky. April 28th, do you want to have just the one on the pants for tonight? When I leave, you will have to have both of them on so it doesn't get away with anything. So by April 28th, you were putting multiple alarms on his person, weren't you? If that's what it says, I didn't realize I even owed more than one. I only remember ordering one. <clears throat> okay, take off the arm one, but warn him that I will count how many times he moves his arm from the camera picking it up, and he'll be doing stairs for that tomorrow. That's at 11 o'clock in the evening on 428. So you're watching to see how many times he moved his arm when he was in his room? How many times he dropped his arm? Was he in his room? I don't know. You I'm tell me. I wasn't there. The wall, All normally, I can do is read you the text message. It says, K, take off the arm one, referencing back to the alarms, but warn him that I will count how many times he moves his arm from the camera picking it up, and he will be doing stairs for that tomorrow. That he He's not sneaking around there, is he? No, he was up against the wall, and he was supposed to have his arms on his head for a certain amount of time. Okay, so at 11 o'clock at night, Sometimes. he's supposed to be up against the wall, and you want to make sure that the, it, it, he knows you're going to know how many times he moves his arm, and if it's not satisfactory, he gets to do stairs for that the next day. Yes, sir, apparently. April 29th, what did he eat? I ate my burger already. Paul's response, he ate the crust. You remember what your response was? I don't remember. I heard it the other day, but I don't remember sending that. <clears throat> Go try to make him throw up, please. That was your response, wasn't it? If that's what it says. Don't remember? No, you sir. put that one in the don't remember category? Like I said, I did. unfortunately, between January and the time he passed away, I don't have a lot of memories in general of Gabriel, I'm sorry, of G, of Timothy, of Paul. I know that there are times that I went over to my in-law's house and there's, I don't remember a lot of that. It's not just this. So the crime he committed here, just so we're clear, wasn't, wasn't sneaky frozen chicken nuggets or a bag of chips. It was eating the crust of what sounds to be an already half-eaten burger or an eaten burger. And your response to that is go make him throw up, please. That's what it says, and the crime was, again, it's being sneaky and deceitful. It's, it was never about the, it wasn't about the food. It was because he, 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 every time we turned around, he was sneaking something. It wasn't just food. He snuck toys. Like I said, he snuck batteries. May 5th, did Timothy work hard enough to sleep tonight so you and I can both get some sleep? He will still have to work super hard tomorrow to earn the same, but wanted to ask about tonight first. Do you want to explain how that falls in with your statement that the reason he wasn't allowed to sleep was because he would keep you guys awake? I actually do remember that. Timothy asked if he could trade off um, not getting to sleep for something else, and I had him doing chores. There's a lot to unpack in that sentence, so I think I'll just start at the end. So he had to ask for permission to sleep. No, right? this was just, this was because he had kept us up. Like I said before, he had kept us up, so he wasn't going to get to sleep. And he asked if, if he could trade that punishment for another punishment. How is that not asked, having to ask for permission to go to sleep, Ms. Van der Ark? It wasn't because it was a punishment. It wasn't anything about He didn't have to ask to go to sleep. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll do something else if you let me sleep, right? I'm tra it was trading a punishment for a punishment. That's... <laughs> May 16th, where is Timothy? Paul's response, sorry, I was getting dressed. Timothy is on a five-minute bathroom timer. Well, four now. And your response, why is he on a five-minute timer? He doesn't get five minutes. He gets 60 seconds unless he needs to poop, then he gets two minutes. 
You only got to go to the bathroom for one minute or two minutes, depending on what he had to do? I don't remember. I didn't. I don't remember ever enforcing that, but obviously I sent it. But does doesn't that strike you as with everything else that happens? It's just <clears throat> cruel and unusual to tell a child, heck, to tell anybody that you only get a certain amount of time in the bathroom. That that doesn't strike you as cruel. Objective, argumentative. It's not argumentative. It's certainly it's argumentative. Uh, she can answer the question, but certainly the way it's phrased is is an argument. There's no question there. There's a, it's an argument here. The judge with a question mark at the end. No, I, I really want to know if she thinks it's cruel to put somebody on a bathroom camera. And the relevance of if she thinks it's cruel. The, the, it's, it's simply argumentative, the judge. It, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's argumentative. Um, it, it would tend to give some insight, I suppose, to her intent. Uh, if Mr. Johnson, you would like to clarify or have it clarify what her definition of cruel or unusual is so that we're all on the same page with the witness, that's fine. But I think the uh, question can be asked so that the objection is overruled. So you, but you, your response to that, well, I, I want my question answered. Is it cruel to make a child go on, go to the bathroom on a timer? Yes, sir. May 17th, before I left, when I was having you sign into the camera and turning on the, sec the sound for the camera so you would hear the alarm if it went off. And by the way, I told him yesterday that if he did that in the garage again, he would sleep in the garage for a night. So let him know that he would be doing that as soon as the temperatures are safe enough for him to make, it, to make him do it. So you were going to have him sleep in the garage for a night. I actually remember that text message, and I was, bent, I was frustrated. I never would have done it, but I was frustrated. I, I type really fast, and I, I admit I have a bad habit of saying stuff when I'm upset, and then calm it down later, and it being totally different. But I do remember that, and it, it never happened. It didn't happen? What didn't happen? Did, 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 you didn't make him sleep in the garage? No. Oh. Yes, thank goodness for that. Same day, 1253. Did he heat the pancake in a cup? Otherwise, it's just powder, and it's not safe to eat without being heated, either. When it actually says, did he hear the pancake in the cup? I assume he meant heat the pancake okay. in the cup, right? Um, do you remember this text, text exchange? I, vaguely. And Paul's response, no, he just ate the powder. And your response, that could make him sick, the dummy. Tabasco in his mouth and make him swallow, and lots of it, and do it every 30 minutes until you leave. This was May 17th. Do you remember this exchange? I don't remember the Tabasco, because I never called it. I said Tabasco. Okay. Basco in the mouth and make him swallow, and lots of it, and do it every 30 minutes until you leave. I don't remember that being a part of it. I remember part of the conversation, but I don't remember that part of it. Well, but Keith, I, he obviously didn't like Tabasco, did he? We didn't have any Tabasco sauce. That's why it doesn't make any sense. We had hot sauce, but we didn't have Tabasco sauce. That's what okay, so the punishment for eating pancake in a cup is, to, is Tabasco or some type of hot sauce in the mouth. Is that right? Sneaking something dangerous. Um, if that's what, I mean, if you're asking what he was punished for, it would be for first need. You were concerned for his well-being? Yes, sir. Right. That, that's, that's why you're having this text exchange, right? You're yes, really, sir. You're really concerned for him at that point? Yes, sir. Those pancakes in a cup had, um, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, but I think they had eggs in them. That could make him sick, the dummy. Do you always refer to him as a dummy when you're worried about him? No, sir. You can look at the text messages. I hardly ever said anything like that. Hardly ever said anything like that? It's, it's not a good idea to call a child a dummy, is it? I never would to him. I was frustrated, like I said. <coughs> Later on in that same text exchange, Paul says he also crapped himself. And your response is, what? In his pants? Seriously? Paul, I told him to take a five-minute shower. Make him do the work in the garage with nothing on below the waist. Just make sure the garage door stays closed, and then he can stand down against the wall with nothing on below the waist until you leave. Just please make sure G does not go downstairs at all while he's standing there like that break that up again. So make him do the work in the garage with nothing on below the waist. So his punishment for having an accident was that he had to do chores without pants and underwear on, right? If that's what it says, I don't remember this. That's pretty humiliating, isn't it? I mean, he was by himself. It wasn't, I would never, I mean, I don't remember this at all, sir. You don't, you don't remember that at all? No, sir. Uh, but you, you did have the presence of mind at that time that says, just make sure the garage door stays closed because you don't want anyone seeing him doing that, do you? 
well, I, I didn't want the garage door open ever because we had a lot of stuff out there. So. And then he can stand against the wall with nothing on below the waist until you leave. So, so in addition to cleaning the garage, then he has to stand against the wall with no pants and underwear on, correct? I mean, if that's what it says, I don't, I don't remember this. Please make sure G does not go downstairs at all. Don't remember that either. No, sir. Didn't want, but you, again, you, you physically typed these words into your phone and sent them to Paul to make sure that G doesn't see Timothy like that, right? Yes, sir. His clothes need to be washed right away, but he gets to be without anything below the waist for a while today. Did he see? Did he say why the heck he did that? And Paul's response is, he didn't. He said he didn't want to disturb anyone. He had to ask for permission to go to the bathroom, didn't he? No, sir. Not usually. If he was on the wall, he did. Because he was supposed to be standing still. Just the handcuff transactions. We've talked about that. So let's get back to your statement to Officer, or excuse me, to Detective Pisky. Um, you, did, you didn't tell the detective about the warm bath, um, but you told him that you realized how skinny he was the night before and threatened to take him to the ER if he didn't eat. That's not true, is it? No, sir. And you didn't make him a piece of toast and give it to him and make him eat it, did you? No, sir. I have no idea why I said that. I was, I was traumatized. I actually didn't come out of the first month I was in jail. I, it was... I wish uh, the Lydia that used to work for the public defender's office visited me, and she she said it was it was pretty obvious that I, that I was under severe trauma. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat for my first month. This was this was while that they were searching your house on July sixth while you were sitting in your house. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you thinking, oh, well, I better better tell him. Yeah, he looked a little skinny last night, and I thought I should take him to the ER and then make some toast with butter on it and watch him eat it, and he walked away. None of that happened, did it? No, I don't. I don't even remember that. But you had the presence of mind to lie to the officer at the time when he was investigating. Like I said, I was traumatized. I don't know. I don't remember this, sir. Um, he wouldn't come upstairs when she said good night. She walked down to the last couple of stairs and asked for a hug and a kiss. That didn't happen either, did it? I don't remember. I mean, I would assume not, but I don't remember. In fact, you're acknowledging that the, that video that shows you dragging him into a small room looking like he does when he dies, calling him a dummy for breathing with his mouth open is actually what you did to him the night before he died, right? If that's what it shows, I don't remember, sir. Your statement to Detective PC continues. She got ready for work in the morning and went to check on him. She said his name, but he did not respond. She put her hand on his chest and he was not breathing. She remembered her 20-year-old son, Paul, helping her get him off the bed. That was all a lie, wasn't it? Yes, sir. You know where he was when you found him that morning, right? In, in the closet. In, in the small room. room. And er, prior to that, you told Officer Stephanich, well, it was about 5.30, he fell out of bed, and I had to go and put him back into bed. Also a lie, right? Yes, sir. I have no idea why I said that, sir. Like I said, I was traumatized. You told Detective Pisky that Timothy started a, stated he was on a hunger strike two weeks ago. This is two weeks before he dies. He goes on a hunger strike. Yes, sir. Did he go on a hunger strike? Yes, sir, he did. Show me the text message between you and Paul where it says that he's on a hunger strike. I don't know if I ever texted him about it, sir. We talked about it, but I never texted. I mean, if it's not in there, I don't. We didn't text about everything. You, 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 never, you never texted Paul about him being on a hunger strike? No, I would have told him that in person. I wouldn't have said that over text message. That would have been imper important. But Paul has to watch him for the day when you're not home, right? Yes, sir. So it would be Paul's responsibility to get him some food, right? Yes, sir. So while he's on a hunger strike, instead of talking about the hunger strike, your response to that is, give him four slices of bread with hot sauce on it, and if he eats them and waits 30 minutes, he can eat four without. Right? I don't know what day that was, sir, if you're... Let's find it and make sure. I mean, we, we tried to, just because he wasn't eating, we tried to feed him. That was... And the best solution you come up with is force him to eat the bread with hot sauce on it. That was the response to the hunger strike? I don't remember. Sir. I mean, it wasn't, we tried to feed him. That's, that's all I remember. <clears throat> so when would that hunger strike have started? Um, end of June. Late June. 
And again, you never looked at the, the bone thin photo to see what kind of condition he was in before he goes on this hunger strike, right? Yes, sir. And did it ever occur to you like he's on a hunger strike now? And I know Paul had sent me that text about, you know, he's bone thin. I think we actually need to feed him. We need to actually feed him. It never occurred to you that maybe you should go back and look at that text message now and see what condition he was in at the time? No, sir. When with me, when something's out of sight, it's out of mind. Once that's scrolled up, I don't scroll back to <coughs> the text messages. Out of sight, out of mind. That applies to Timothy as well, doesn't it? That applies to, to a lot of things, sir. It's not just. I mean, if not little just man wasn't. Timothy. No, if little man was not in front of me right then, then I wasn't necessarily thinking about it. Paul wasn't. June 19th, you can do his bread with hot sauce at any time, though preferably sooner rather than later. Put more hot sauce on than you did yesterday, please. And he has to eat at least three slices with hot sauce, but he may have more as long as they have plenty of hot sauce on him. That was June 19th. Was he on his hunger strike then? I would assume not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an exact date. That was about two weeks before he, he passed away, and that's when you said the hunger strike started. Is that right? Yes, sir. But did it occur to you that the hunger strike was because he didn't enjoy eating bread with hot sauce on it? Did it occur to me? No, sir, because he did it way back in January, and that wasn't the case. June 21st, how, how is everything? Did you make him eat his bread with hot sauce? Yeah, and that's when it's the, uh, he gets four with hot sauce, and then four more, 30 minutes. That was June 21st. You don't know if hunger strike started there then? I don't know, sir. Like I said, I, I can only guesstimate. That's... <coughs> The only reason I remember the three weeks the first time around is because it was right after the stroke and it, he started eating again before the end of January. Right. Did, you, did you think he's on a second hunger strike now? <coughs> I really need to get him some treatment for this. Did I think along those lines? No, sir. He, he admitted to being, he told us, very early on after the stroke that he was taking advantage of that because we didn't have the extra set of eyes with my husband and he was being difficult. He, he actually, Timothy told me that his dad and stepmom used to let him get away with everything. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but he's, I've always been a stricter parent anyway and he, he told me on multiple occasions that if, um, if he thought that if he pushed me hard enough that I would just quit making him do stuff and I, I wouldn't make him cooperate. All right, well, here's an exchange from June 29th. Maybe this can shed some light on the hunger strike feeding situation. Trust me, I know he's thin. Trust me, I know he's thin. That was your, your text, no? Paul's, you sent. You I, sent I don't remember text, the text, right? but I mean. You don't remember that one either? No, sir. Trust me, I know he's thin. That being said, he told me a week and a half ago that he wanted to be thin to make me feel bad for punishing him. You don't get to grump at him for that, though I already lit into him plenty for it. Is this while he's on his hunger strike? I mean, I would, I would assume so, yes, sir. This is June 29th. This is yes, about sir. eight days before he dies. Yeah, I would assume so. And Paul's response is, of course he did. And your response to that is, yeah, so while I want to fix it, he will get most of his calories from plain bread and rice for, you know, pulling that. He will get plenty of calories but not get to enjoy them that way, you know? Uh, that doesn't sound like somebody who's on a hunger strike to me. Can you clarify that for me, please? I don't, I don't remember, but I know he wasn't eating. There was. It continues on. KK, so yeah, we'll tell you more about what he can eat later, June 29th. Just because we offered him food doesn't, I mean, we offered him food when he was on the hunger strike in January. Um, at least I did. I mean, I would assume Paul did as well. But just because you offered stuff, I mean, you couldn't, even though it says try to force him to eat, he couldn't force him to eat stuff. I mean, if he didn't you heard eat Paul's it. testimony yesterday that he had to force him, force him to eat the bread sauce, the bread with hot sauce on it, didn't you? Yes, sir. I don't know what he means by that. Uh, it's interesting you use the phrase, we, we tried to tempt him with food. That, that, that came up while he was in the ice bath, didn't it? Tempting him with food. Do you mean the day before he passed? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, if I said, I, yes, sir. I mean, I <clears throat> you told Paul to Heat up some pizza rolls because G needed the pizza rolls anyway, right? You remember that? Yes, sir. You remember I, I don't remember the text message. Don't remember, I, so this falls in the I don't remember category as well. Is that right? Like most of it. Well, yes, the sir. text message says, heat one up, hold it in front of them, but be ready to pull away if he tries to grab it. You, you don't remember sending any of that? I don't remember it, no, sir.
you, you heard the text messages read yesterday, correct? Yes, sir, I did. Is it, is it fair to say that you just don't remember those text messages? Most of them, I don't remember. Most of them, yeah. But then you've got your big bind. I can, I can pretty much guarantee I don't remember most of that either. I don't, and it's not just my text with Paul. You, you don't remember anything? No, sir, I don't. But somehow you were able to hold down a job as a judicial clerk during that time period, right? Yes, sir. My and only you were able to at least provide dog training to one client at that time, correct? Yes, sir. And you remembered to tell Paul to get up and walk Sharma just about every morning, didn't you? I mean, I, that would be automatic. It would be reflex. If it's in there, then, then I would assume so. Yes, sir. That would be reflex to, to tell Paul to get up and walk Sharma? Is that what you're saying? I mean, if, I, if it's a habit, if I do it enough times, then... And plus, it served to get Paul out of bed when I left, because he'd like to go back to sleep. You told the officer that there was an alarm on the basement door, that, that, that's this, the closet, this is the small closet, because there was some sewing stuff stored in it. That was a lie, wasn't it? Yes, sir. There was sewing stuff stored in it before he asked to do that, but, but the alarm I don't know why I told him that. The alarm wasn't on there because there was sewing stuff on it, was there? No, sir. The alarm was on it because, Paul, because Timothy was supposed to be in there, right? I mean, as far as I know, like I said, I don't. Don't, don't. You don't remember, but you were able to lie to the police officer at the time? I don't remember talking to the police I mean, I don't remember this part of the conversation with the police officer, sir. You tell the officer that there were cameras in the home because they gave, because G would strip down naked and wander around. Um, well, that wasn't the only reason the cameras were in the house, was it? No, sir. You left out all the other details about that you had to monitor Timothy and make sure he didn't go certain places and sneak places and be deceitful, right? You didn't tell the officer that, did you? Apparently not. I don't know why I didn't, but. You said he fell out of bed and you went and had to get him and put him back into bed. He never fell out of bed that night, did he? Not as far as I know. I don't remember, sir. Well, you know he didn't sleep in the bed that night, don't you? Well, yeah, so I'm sorry. Right. So saying that you got up at 5.30 and had to put him back into bed, uh, and then you changed it to 30 minutes because it's sometime with the ending in a 30 because you learned at that point that rigor mortis had already set in and he'd been deceased for a number of hours. That was still a lie, wasn't it? I mean, yes, sir, I don't remember any of this. I'm sorry. <coughs> The hot, sauce, the hot sauce in the bathroom downstairs was for food. Um, but it wasn't, was it? The hot sauce was for punishment, right? It was also to put on food. But you didn't mention that oh, we also use hot sauce as a form of punishment, did you? Apparently not. I'm, I'm guessing you probably didn't mention the officer. Oh, we also had the crazy idea yesterday to pour some hot sauce on his penis for a punishment. You didn't mention that either, did you? Apparently not, sir. Like I said, I don't remember. You told the officer that you did not restrict Timothy's movement at night with shackles. That was also a lie, wasn't it? Again, I don't remember, sir. I know we talked about it, but as far as overnight, no. But you would restrict his movement with shackles, wouldn't you? Whether it was zip ties or handcuffs or leg shackles. I mean, I can only go by based on the text messages. I don't know. Why did you wait 20 minutes to call 911 after you found Timothy deceased in the small closet in the small room? I have no idea, honestly. I did. I had. I learned of that gap, what, just a couple of days ago. I, it, the whole. I mean, the whole day is surreal to me. So I, I have no idea why we waited like that. I don't know. I can't imagine waiting, but apparently it happened. I don't know. Do you remember Paul asking you, "Should we call 911"? I don't remember him ever asking. I, I don't, I mean, because I was the one that called. And I was the one, I, I, he, I remember performing CPR. <coughs> and he did help me out a little bit when I got tired to take over a little bit. But, I mean, I can't imagine ever saying no to that. I, but if it's on the video, that's what you said, right? If it's on there. So if the video showed that it begins with you 
with movement outside of the room at about 61921. And 911 is actually called. You say you tell Paul you have to call at 637, so about that's about 18 minutes, isn't it? I mean, I'll, let's see, 19, yeah, that's 18 minutes. And Timothy was never responsive to you, was he? No, sir. His eyes were completely wide open, completely glazed over, weren't they? As far as I remember, yes, sir. He never moved, never took a breath, never did anything, did he? No, sir. And while this is all going on, you tell Paul will have to tell them he was on a hunger strike, right? You remember telling him that? No, I don't. Don't remember that either? No, sir. Do you remember telling Paul, or do you remember saying, put his pants on to make it look like he's been this way? I don't remember saying that. Do you remember asking Paul to put the belt on to make it sure that that's the way he looked? No, sir. But if they're on video, you said those things, yes, right? Yes, sir. Van Ark, isn't it true, Timothy had just become nothing more than an annoyance for you, and he wasn't even a human being in your eyes anymore? That is absolutely not true. Oh. Mr. John. Ms. Van Der Ark. Yes, sir. Did you... In, in your Lord, did you reduce everything you did and said and 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 the comments you made into text that you put in your your your, your phone and sent out? Oh, absolutely not. I talk a lot. I admit that. I, the text was probably ten percent of what I said. Okay, so it, it would it be true to say that there there are other conversations, other issues, other details that are not contained in those texts? Many, yes, sir. Okay, uh, you were asked. Um, if you only couldn't remember the, the, the bad things or the, incrim I guess, the incriminating things. You remember having that question? Yes, sir, I remember that question. Were you, do, during the course of this conversation, you had with Mr. Roberts, were you ever asked about any of the good things that were going on? Not really, no, sir. So, in, and I, as I recall, you reported that you can't remember some of those as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I know my son played baseball. I don't remember most of his games, and I know I caught for the team because the coaches were on first and third, but I don't actually remember doing it most of the time. I remember a couple of games, but I know we had more than two games. Let me ask you about this. You, you, you had children, and you taught dogs. Yes, sir. Do you teach children and dogs conduct or responsibility in the same manner? Absolutely not. Uh, did you ever uh, deprive your son of water as far as your No, sir. No, sir. Uh, there was conversation from Paul, and he asked, he said that you broke a chip in the four <clears throat> places, and you threw it out the window. Did you do that? No, sir. No. Can you show the jury in, in using your fingers how big a, a chip is. It was a micro SD.